professional season around. He's done a pretty good job for them. That is until the last few games when he has had his problems. He did have a bruised right shoulder suffered in the Cardinal game, but he has been all right. And we'll see what works here as the 5-7 and seven Vikings face the 6-6 six and six Eagles. Evan Cooper, Andre Waters, and Herman Hunter are back. And Herman Hunter is the man in the middle for the Philadelphia Eagles. He had his best day as a kickoff return man last week. He is a rookie and a good one. The veteran Jan Stenaru, who celebrated his 43rd birthday this week, gets the game underway. It is a short kick and over in, and Hunter on the 11th. And Hunter brings it out beyond the 25-yard line to the 28, where he's stopped by Allen Rice. And the Philadelphia Eagles offensive backfield, Jaworski, Jackson, Haddock, Kenny Jackson, and Mike Quick. And the offensive line. Leonard Mitchell, the former defensive end, having a fine year there in that group. Philadelphia Eagles with an improved offensive line. And Jaworski, who has thrown nine interceptions in his last four games. First and ten on the 28. Ernest Jackson. Carries just to the 30-yard line. He has been the leading rusher for the Eagles. And we may see a lot of that kind of play today as you look at the defensive line. Well, they, they start out, they, they announce a 4-3, but they started the game in a 3-4 with big Tim Newton at the nose tackle. And they have four linebackers. Dennis Folk remains inside, along with David Howard and the secondary. Carl Lee playing again in place of Rufus Beck. Second down and seven. They mark the ball on the 31. Six bats in there for the Vikings. And the call goes to Haddock. He's tripped up. And it'll be third and about five for the Philadelphia Eagles, who have won five of their last seven despite their loss to the Dallas Cowboys last week. Matt Blair, the 35-year-old veteran on the stop. Passing situation now here for Philadelphia. We talked to them yesterday, and they felt Minnesota plays the zone extremely well, and they favor the outside, so they thought if anything would be open in this game for them, passing-wise, it would be over the middle, both short and long. Three wide receivers, it's third and four. Kenny Jackson, Mike Quick are joined by Greg Garrity. Fagnola, number 88, to tie it in. Watch his release now. He bumps the linebacker, drifts on out here, and Jaworski gets it to him. He has a tough time getting his release right there, as you'll see. Fights off, makes his break there, and Jaworski has it right on the money. And a Philadelphia first down. Fagnola, who caught the winning touchdown pass to beat the Vikings right here a year ago. Ball at the 39. Mike Quick in motion. Ernest Jackson brings it out to the 42-yard line, gain of about three, and that nose tackle you were talking about, Tim Newton, was right there. Well, I tell you what, he's 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 had a great rookie year, and, and he's outstatted the refrigerator, William Perry, in, in every uh, stat but one in that sack. And he, they still kind of think that Perry will make the all-rookie team and not him, but this guy's had a fine year. He has more tackles, more interceptions. He forced more fumbles and recovered more fumbles than the refrigerator, but hasn't gotten the ink nearly, huh? No, sir, who has? Second and seven at the 42-yard line. Once again on the ground, Ernest Jackson with a head of steam and a first down for Philadelphia. And the Eagles are at midfield, and Joey, Joey Browner comes up from strong safety to make the tackle. Great lead block by number 26, Michael Haddock. Watch him now. He'll come up and get number 39, Carl Lee, who shows up in the hole. Had it coming through. Lee right there, makes the tackle. Ernest Jackson into the hole. Maybe not as quick as people like Wendell Tyler, Walter Payton, but extremely fast he gets in there. He told us yesterday, I'm not a breakaway runner, but he looked awfully close to that on that play. So it's the first and 10 Eagles on the Minnesota 49. 
Here's a blitz. And Jackson picks up a couple of yards. Dennis Folk, who's playing in place of Scott Studwell, inside was blitzing on the play. Folk made the tackle. He saw a lot of action against New Orleans, where he made 10 tackles on the play. You'll see number 50. Folks right up here, faking the blitz, come in here. Now that makes it solid because everybody else takes a gap also in there. Makes it solid in the middle against the run. Not only works good against the pass, also against the run. Second down. Seven. Jaworski stepping up. He completes it to Kenny Jackson. It's another Eagle first down. And Jackson gets inside the 35 before Isaac Holt, with help from John Turner, made the stop a gain of 14 yards. Jackson out and on top of your screen right out here, Dickie. He's the one that told us if he comes down here and works his way out that he thought if anything was going to be open yesterday, it would be over the middle. So worth it completed a couple passes here. You see Jackson slip and then work his way out on the pivot. It'd be over the middle. Both passes have been complete to the outside. So much for game plan. <laughs> Kenny Jackson's presence, of course, have enabled uh, the Eagles not to have double coverage on Mike Quick all the time. Been a big pressure. right there for Mike Quick as he's working against Willie Teal. Do you think he might have a field day today? Well, we were talking about if the middle's going to be open, he catches the ball over the middle and does more with it after the catch than perhaps anybody in the league. First and 10 on the 15, and Ernest Jackson knocks over several defenders as he gets to the 10-yard line, a gain of five. Dennis Folks and David Howard, two linebackers making the tackle on Jackson who led the AFC with San Diego in rushing last year. And last week was only the second time this year he failed to lead the Eagles in that department. But it's been an up and down season for him anyway. He hasn't quite got a handle on it himself. Second and five on the 10 yard line. This is the 10th play of the series. Jackson again. Jackson to the seven-yard line. Matt Blair making the stop for the Vikings. Jackson has gone over 100 yards on two occasions, both against the Cardinals. As he limped back to the huddle, Jackson gained 162 against St. Louis a couple of weeks ago, including a 51-yard run. Jackson, you know, he says that when I, when I get the ball, I look to make four or five yards. I don't look to break it every time I get it. I look to get my four yards or my five yards. Anything after that is greater. Jackson goes out of the game, two tight ends. Dave Little joins John Spagnola. Havoc is the lone setback. It's third and two on the seventh. Jaworski swings it out to Havoc, and Havoc is stopped shy of a first down by Carl Lee, who makes a fine tackle. It'll be fourth down at about two yards. The crowd would like the Eagles to go for it. And so far, no decision by Marion Campbell. Well, I think he's waiting until they place the ball so they can find out exactly how far it is to go. And then I think that we'll see the Fadden out. Well, they're going with a good bet right here in Paul McFadden, who has been successful on 18 of 21 field goal attempts, including a season-high 52-yarder. This will be a 25-yard attempt, and Jaworski will do the holding. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Eagles have controlled the ball throughout. Now with a chance to take the lead. And the 
30 second clock. Delay of the game. Has run down and a delay of the game call. So they'll move it back and that shouldn't hurt us that much. No, no, it shouldn't. They waited just a little bit too long to see where the ball was going to be placed before he got the team out there on the field. It takes a little while longer to set up your field goal and, and your punting and your special teams than it does just to run your offense out there and get a playoff. So McFadden, who's been a tremendously successful kicker for the Eagles in his second year. He hit one for 54 yards, his very first attempt in college. So he's got the leg, skinny little guy, and you wouldn't think so, but he's got a great stroke. This will be a 29-yard attempt. But the kick is good, and the Eagles have taken the lead. And a fancy bit of ball control by Ron Jaworski, mixing the passes with the run. And it's three to nothing in favor of the Eagles. Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker back at Veterans Stadium. And Wayne, of course, the Vikings already have won two more games than they did all of last year. But it is too early to count on any team for the playoffs, and the fact is the Eagles, looking at their schedule, could win four more. Marion Campbell said that at this point in the season they wanted to be in the playoff picture, and they are. He said every year one team comes out of the pack. He hopes it's, that this year it's the Eagles. They have, to, they have to win four, and then they have to have San Francisco lose a couple. And they got to win this game, and of course they play two against the Vikings. The kickoff going to Buster Lime, who muffed it. Ted Brown picks it up and is written out of bounds. At the 21-yard line by Dwayne Giles. This was the play that stopped the Eagles on third down. Carly, the cornerback right here. Now you'll see the Vikings in the defense where he'll drift back, cover the outside receiver for a while, and then come up and make the hit on Haddock right here after the play starts. And so you were talking about Minnesota playing a zone. Usually you play man-to-man -man down here near the goal line, but they're in the zone. He lets the receiver go, comes back up and makes the stop. And that prevented the first down. Big play by Carl Lee, but now we're looking at Wade Wilson making his first start this year. Five-year veteran from East Texas State. First and 10 at the 21, Ted Brown is the running back. Brown on the pitch. And Brown brings it out just shy of the 25-yard line. Gain of four on the play and the tackle by Reggie White. Wade Wilson is the quarterback and Darren Nelson is back today. Big play individual. They missed him last week. He got hurt on the first play of the game. The offensive line and the tight end, Steve Jordan, having a fine year. Yeah, Mark McConnell getting his first start of the season, the left guard, because Brent Boyd ill with a flu. Second down and six for the Minnesota Vikings, who have had problems getting underway in recent games. And Darren Nelson now in the backfield, along with Ted Brown. And the Vikings have also been turning the ball over too much. It has come back to haunt them. Darren Nelson. Nelson for a couple of yards. It'll be third and short. Nelson had the bruised sternum in the first play last week and did not return. Reggie White makes the tackle. Marion Campbell says he's getting all pro play out of the nose tackle Ken Clark this season. And White and Brown have also played well. This solid group there, Gary Cobb, came over from the Detroit Lions this year. Big man missing in the secondary. You bet. You know who that is, Wes Hopkins. And Bree Wilson, a former starter, taking his place. But they'll go down a little bit. Wes Hopkins is one of the best in the game. Third and four at the 27. Sammy White, the veteran in, is a third wide receiver and seven defensive backs for the Eagles. Wilson fires, breaks the needle, but it's incomplete. Darren Nelson could not hold on to it, and he was sandwiched by a couple of Eagle defenders, and all seven of those, according to Marion Campbell, are good enough to start. Now you see what Wilson was looking at. Look at these defensive backs down here. Count them, one, two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. That's what he's looking at. Try to find a spot to throw to, and he did. He got good protection. You're right, a funny four. Yeah. I skipped that four, <laughs> didn't I? I skipped the fourth grade. <laughs> you made up for it. Greg Coleman, who leads the NFC, will be funny. And Evan Cooper is back. Second year out of the University of Michigan. So the Eagle defense holds. Coleman gets off a good kick. Cooper is hit by Carl Lee, who is hitting everybody today in the first quarter, but the Eagles lead it three to nothing. Bud Grant was the number one draft pick by the Philadelphia Eagles in 1950. Played for him and then went to Canada. And also played pro basketball with the Minneapolis Lakers. Our visit with him last night looked like he was still in pretty good shape, too. Looked like he could hit the 20 
foot jumper and catch some of those passes. Vikings on defense. You know, we asked him, is this about this season, you know, have you been happy with this team at all? He said, no, not really, because, you know, even though we've won a few more games, it's really not how you win or lose, it's did you win. And we haven't won as many as we should. You mean winning is the only thing? Is that what he's mean in this business? I guess so. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 25. Jaworski is 4 for 4 so far in this game. 27 remaining in the first quarter. Mike Quick in motion. Here's Ernest Jackson. Good block from Haddock. And Jackson gets good yardage beyond the 30-yard line. Hard running Ernest Jackson, who is only 5'9", but weighs 209 pounds, is tackled by Dennis Folk and Willie Peel. You bet. Watch the block by Haddock right here on Chris Martin, the linebacker. He'll come across. Haddock's the back right back here over in the corner. Comes up, makes the cut block on him. And that's the Springer. Mike Quick leading, Martin lets him go by, and then he lets Haddock get to his legs, and he's down. 31 yards and seven carries already for Jackson, second and three on the 32. Jackson again, first down. He almost ran over his blocker. Steve Kenny out in front of him. Dennis Foltz on the tackle, and it looks like Ernest Jackson's day so far. Offside guard Steve Kenny right here was the lead blocker on this. Watch him come through the hole and lead. You'll see why that play picked up a few. Kenny out in front, another lead block by Haddock. He's around the corner, gets a block on foul. Or foul, rather. Plenty of room. First and ten. Philadelphia has all of them so far in this game. At the 38-yard line. Winding down the five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Guess who? Ernest Jackson. Head down. Gets to the 42-yard line, gain of four yards on the play, and the tackle is by Tim Newton. The New Orleans team ran extremely well against Minnesota last week, and a team like Philadelphia sees that in the game films, and they think they can get something going. And, you know, they, they were talking all week long that we think we can run against this team. And, uh, Ernest, that, of course, that's going to make the offensive lineman happy. Ernest Jackson's going to make him happy because he, he, he says, I need about 25 carries in a game, and that's my normal my normal way to go. Earl Campbell's 160 yards was the most yards rushing against the Vikings this year. Second down and five at the 43. <laughs> Ernest Jackson off tackle, piled on at the 45 yard line, a gain of two. It'll be third and short. Tim Newton has played very well so far at nose tackle and Chris Dolman helped out. Watch him, Newton, right in here. Watch him battle. This man right here, that's Denard the center, and this man right here, that's Ron Baker the guard. Now watch the play develop, watch him go into Dennard right there, straighten him up, and take on that pull and create that log jam in the middle. The rookie from Florida making his presence felt. It'll be third down and two at the 46 for the Eagles, who have pretty much controlled the ball throughout this first quarter. Jaworski, quick pass to quick, first down, and what a move on John Turner. To the 30-yard line, another first down, and he take John Turner out to the tune of 25 yards. You, know, you hate to say it, I told you so. Watch Vikings blitz this time. You see a blitzer coming in from the right side, Joey Browner. Jaworski saw that, went to quick right away, and, and we said earlier this guy can do as much with the football after a catch. Does anybody in the National Football League and shows you why right here? Kenny Jackson downfield helping him out with a block. Neil Elshire and Isaac Holt finally brought down Mike Quick, who has caught two passes, one for 19 yards and that one for 25. And the Eagles, with less than three minutes to go in the first quarter, have a first and ten on the Vikings 30. Ernest Jackson tripped up after a pickup of one yard, and the man who did it was David Howard out of Cal State Long Beach. But a busy day so far for number 41. Now you see Joey Browner over. He'll come in right from the outside, right over here on the blitz, and that's what Jaworski read. There's Browner, number 47, lined up on the line of scrimmage, came in the safety on the blitz. Jaworski stopped right away. One of the few times the Eagles have been in a second and long situation. They are second and eight at the 28-yard line. Dorothy swings it out. 
It was almost caught by Michael Haddix after Doug Martin got a hand on it. Jaworski was looking downfield, but the Vikings had the receivers covered pretty well. Yeah, you, you know, you don't see that very often. You got Doug Martin over here, a defensive lineman's going to end up, come out, and then being on the pass coverage. Watch him now. There's the back out. I can turn around and run, get a hand up. The ball actually hits it. It's still caught, but bobbled. Good play by mistake, but at least he had the presence of mind to keep the hands up just in case. Well, that was his coverage. That'll happen a lot of times. Defensive ends have to be quick enough to get out there in the flat. That was Jaworski's first incompletion of the game. Third down and eight with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Deep drop on the shotgun, and here is John Spagnola. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Eagles lead at 9-0. Watch the line stunt by the Vikings. And they, they started to lift Matt Blair, and he kind of stopped. No pressure on Jaworski. They picked it up well, and he threw a strike right here on a corner pattern, they call it. Right on the money to John Spagnola against Browner, number 47. So it was kind of a Kennedy blitz situation by Minnesota. Not an all-out thing, and it cost him. Fourth touchdown reception of the year for John Spagnola. Jaworski holding for McFadden. Finally, marker is down. The kick is good, and let's wait. Red Cashin, of course, is our referee. You've already met him. Philadelphia Eagles have control the ball. The Vikings have hardly had a chance here. 12 men on the defense. Lined up offside. Number 57 on the defense. Point count. Five yards on the First kickoff. Martin on the penalty, you heard it. It's 10 to nothing. Philadelphia will kick off with a five-yard edge when we come back. Show you where John Spagnola came from on that touchdown pass. He's a tight end here. He gets his release and also show you why the Vikings were in man-to-man -man coverage. Right here is Matt Blair. He comes in on a blitz, but watch him hesitate in here and really not get anything done on the blitz. Here he makes his start. Now he checks and stops. Can't find a spot to go into. The worst he on the man-to-man, -man. there's the result. At the kickoff by McFadden. Taken by Buster Ryan, who carries it out to the 27-yard line. And that's where the Vikings, who have had the ball less than two minutes of this first quarter, take over. Well, next Saturday, CBS Sports presents a fine matchup. Kansas Jayhawks, Larry Brown's team against Jim Valvano's NC State Wolfpack. Valvano personnel in himself and what? Chris Washburn. Danny Manning of the Jayhawks, and they're playing for the Big Apple NIT Championship against Duke University tonight in New York. That's live, 12.30 Eastern, NCAA basketball on CBS. So Wade Wilson with his second series for the Vikings, with 146 remaining in the first quarter, trailing now 10 nothing. Wilson's pass. Penalty marker down. The receiver was hit. Mike Jones, before the ball got there, Herman Edwards may be guilty. Let's wait. Edwards had rough outing against the Dallas Cowboys last week. Interference. Number 46 on the defense. First down. Herman Edwards is number 46. Now he'll be covering out here. He'll show up. Now look for him. You don't see him in the picture right here. But he'll show up. He plays a little bit loose. As you see right there, he comes in. And there's the contact you see right before the ball gets there. Couldn't circle you for him for you because he was out of screen. But we knew he'd show up. If they're not playing with 10. <laughs> first and 10 on the 36. That's the first first down for the Vikings. Darren Nelson gets a good hole and carries it out. Close to the 45-yard line, they'll spot it at the 47, and Darren Nelson, who's the leading rusher and second leading receiver, on the play. The guy you got to watch, he's the kind of halfback right here, Dick, as Brown goes in motion. A little counter step right here with Curtis Rouse, the offside tackle pulling. So many people run that play now, made popular by the Washington Redskins. And Nelson is liable to go all the way at any time, in any ball game, in any situation. Ray Ellis made the tackle. Look at that difference in time of possession. And then the total offense has been all Philadelphia, and the Eagles show it on the scoreboard. Second down and three. Darren Nelson again, and he's thrown back close to a first down. Reggie White was with the man right in the middle, and let's see where they spot the ball. 
Coming up later today, I guess you could call this a playoff game, Wayne. The 49ers and the rest. It really is a playoff game. It, it has that appearance, and I know it will have that emotion when we get to see it this afternoon. They both need it, period. And a lot of people think the loser of that game can uh, bid their playoff hopes bye-bye. The Redskins, of course, playing at home at RFK Stadium, and what a job Jay Schrader has done for them in place of Joe Tyson. First and 10 at the 46 with less than a half a minute remaining in the first quarter. Vikings got the first down, trailing Darren Nelson. Makes the reception at midfield. Anthony Drake drives him to the turf. And the clock is running down the final second. We will not get another playoff before this quarter comes to an end. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. It's been Philadelphia to a 10 to nothing tune. Dick Stockton and Wayne Walker here at Veterans Stadium where the Eagles lead the Vikings as we start the second quarter. The Giants are tied with Cleveland 7-7 in the first quarter. Houston, or Cincinnati 14 to nothing over Houston. Larry Kennebrew, the big back with two touchdowns. Tampa Bay and Green Bay, no score is there in the second quarter. New England and Indianapolis Colts are tied 7-7. And New Orleans with Wade Wilson, the son of Bum, now coaching the Saints, lead the Rams 3-0 early in that game. Second down and six at midfield for the Vikings. Ted Brown goes in motion. Darren Nelson picks up a yard. That's all on the play. And Gary Cobb makes a good stop outside. Cobb is a veteran who came over from the Detroit Lions and kind of fit in right away with the Eagles. Well, he's a natural leader. He was the defensive captain of the Lions and one of their hardest workers came here and only had two days of training camp and during Campbell City, you know, he just fit like a glove on a hand in here. He's a good guy to have around in the locker room, keep things loose, talk to the young guys. And he's been an added plus. Third down and four. Struthers is in the game for pass rushing purposes for the Eagles. Wade Wilson completes the pass for the first down to Mike Jones. Tackled by Elbert Fowles. It gets kind of rough there, and Mike Jones, who's a superb possession receiver, gives the Vikings a first down in Eagle territory. Well, you got all those defensive backs in the game again. Four down linemen, and the rest are defensive backs. Impressive right here is the arm strength. Ball was on a perfect spiral, wobbled a little bit, but still got there in a hurry. Let's talk about Wade Wilson a little bit. What are his assets and uh, what are the things he perhaps lacks? In? That kind of pattern right there, he says he throws well. He likes to throw the, the in moves and, and breaks to the back. He said the toughest thing for him to throw is the quick out. First and 10 at the 42-yard line, opening minutes of the second quarter. Wilson with a play action. Fires, incomplete. The intended receiver was Mike Jones. And right now for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, a rejuvenated Earl Campbell, apparently, Wayne. Yeah, you bet. He had a big game last week, as you mentioned before, against these Minnesota Vikings. And uh, Bum Phillips told us a couple, three weeks ago that Earl Campbell would prove that he was still a football player before this season was over. We're going to have a timeout here called by the Vikings, and we'll take a break as well. Miller made the American way since 1855. And by the Sperry Corporation. Less than a minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. The Minnesota Vikings trailing 10 0, but they have a second and 10 on the Eagles 42. The Vikings have lost three in a row, six of their last eight games. And up against a tough defensive unit here. Wilson dumps it off to Darren Nelson, but coming up is the Eagle defense and knocks him out of bounds. A loss on the play, maybe a yard. Ken Clark, the man you were talking about at the top of the program, and Anthony Griggs from linebacker. And Clark is just about as ideal a nose tackle as you could find. Yeah, Kenny Clark, that's just really good hustle coming all the way from the nose tackle spot. You'll see him right up here on the center, and you'll see Griggs be right here. The linebacker, watch him come over here and both get in on the play on that screen. But that's just excellent hustle from the nose tackle. Watch him play the center, take care of things in the middle, and then hustle on out here. Broke through a couple blockers, gets in on the tackle with the linebacker. Good play. Now you see why Marion Campbell liked him so much. Ball is at the 43. Wilson completes to his tight end, Steve Jordan. And a first down. And there's an example of the shotgun arm of Wade Wilson. Andre Waters 
Brings down Jordan, not before he gains 22. Watch the line spin in the middle that the Eagles pull. See that little loop twist in there? Picked up well by the Vikings. Jordan, who came into the game with 55 catches, that was tops in the NFC for tight ends. Gets another one that was right on the shelf for him. Great throw. He had his problems last week. He dropped the ball a few times against the New Orleans Saints, but Jordan has had a terrific season. He's fourth in the conference, as you see, and he gives the Vikings an important first and 10 on the Eagle 21. Ken Clark had moved, looked like he had gotten back. The question is, was he drawn off? And apparently the penalty is against Philadelphia. So a first and five changes things dramatically, doesn't it, when you get within that uh, so-called red territory? Encroachment, number 71 on the defense, still first down. No question he made some contact there, but you're right, Dick, it gives you an extra down or two and gives you a little leeway to do things. People at home might want to watch the way that uh, the Eagles line up defensively with that three-man line. They got their nose tackle crowded up, Ken Clark on the center, but the two defensive ends in their three, four, kind of sit back off the line. It's almost like a Dallas flex. First down and five, the ball now at the 16. Darren Nelson goes nowhere. And the tackle made by Anthony Griggs. We'll show you that Philadelphia set. Now you'll see the nose tackle right here. Kenny Clark cheated up on the ball, but look at this defensive end right here, Reggie White. And then the other one over here, Greg Brown. See how far off the ball they are? That enables them, like almost like the Dallas Flex, to read the running play before they react to it. If they're up in the line of scrimmage, Marion Campbell leaves them, get tied up by the tackles before they get a chance to read. Second down and four. This is the tenth play of the drive. The Vikings trail 10 to nothing. Looking to get back in this game. Wilson rolling out. Hits Ted Brown for a first down and out of bounds to the eight-yard line. Ray Ellis, who's quite a hitter, knocks Ted Brown out of bounds. Minnesota's been running this play as long as Bud Grant and Jerry Burns have been there, and that's been almost forever. Grant Tark has been used to run this with Chuck Foreman out in the flat. Same play, roll out right. You can't stop this play, you can't stop the Minnesota Vikings. That's one of their bread and butter plays. And first and goal at the nine-yard line, and Ted Brown, who has scored two touchdowns, as a receiver, five as a running back. A good personal all-round back. First and goal at the nine, with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Darren Nelson has a hole. And Nelson gets to the two-yard line. A gain of seven yards, and it was wide open running for Darren Nelson. And a good block by the right tackle, Tim Irwin. Take a peek at it now. Man in motion, takes one safety with him, and it's kind of a cutback move here. Now, Darren Nelson, only about 200 pounds, but he's got good leverage. He's still really close to the ground, and you see him be able to shed a tackle and pick up some extra yardage. He doesn't like to run over people, though. He says, I'd rather run around him. He's having his best year as a runner is Darren Nelson. His best game was 122 yards against the Lions. Second and goal on the one and a half. a brick wall the eagle defense alfred anderson i think ray ellis i'm not sure might have been ray ellis number 24 the strong safety who got good penetration back there and got into anderson before he got started let's see who it was somebody got good penetration let's see who shows up ellis is on outside right here it was just a good surge by reichenbach the inside linebacker number 55 great play now it's third and goal at the one. Anderson and Brown are the running back. It's Brown, and he goes nowhere. Byron Darby, who's been back three weeks from injured reserve, came up and stopped. Yes, we talked to Bud Grant about this yesterday. I asked him, is the fact that you really don't have a big back hurt you this year in goal line situations? And he says, well, Anderson weighs 230, but they didn't give it to Anderson this time. He's the lead blocker. This time it's Ted Brown, and Brian Darby, number 94, made a good play. 
The Vikings had first and goal at the nine, and they could not get the touchdown, and so Jan Stenaru, 43 years old, who's 11 for 17 in field goals this year, and of course a brilliant all-round career, Greg Coleman, the team's punter, will do the holding. A 19-yard attempt with 9.35 to go in the first half to try to put the Vikings on the scoreboard. And he does it. The kick is no good. That was the most emotion we've seen from Marion Campbell in quite some time. Watch it here now. Coleman and Holder gets it down in good shape. The laces are away. Jan had a nice easy stroke at it. Marion called it. And he was right. 11 for 18. And the Eagles defense holds. They still lead it. 10 to nothing. Well, the Vikings had it for seven and a half minutes. And the Eagles defense equal to the task plus. And Stenerud missing the 19-yarder. First and 10 for the Eagles now at the 20-yard line. Ernest Jackson and Michael Haddock to the running back. And Haddock gets the ball. Brings it out to the 24-yard line. A gain of four. Tackled by Chris Dolman, the rookie from Pittsburgh. The Browns lead the Giants. 14 to 7 in the second quarter at Giants Stadium. They're tied to Giants with Dallas. Actually, Dallas has a one-half game lead in that division. Pittsburgh over Denver 3-0 in the second quarter. And look at Cincinnati win. Added another score now. 21 to nothing in the second quarter over Houston. Boomer Esiason threw a touchdown pass there. And Green Bay has taken the lead over the Buccaneers of Tampa Bay. The Battle of the Bay 7-0. Green over Tampa. Second and six after 24, Michael Haddock. First down, fumble, and it's picked up by Carl Lee, and Lee is going to run it back, and they're going to blow it dead. They're going to blow it dead. I think they're going to say that Haddock is down. And the crowd's going to love that if that's the case, and they don't rule fumble. Haddock will have the first down if they do not rule a fumble on the play, and apparently that's going to be the call. Attic number 26 now, straight ahead blocking. Here's the cut up. The ball came out as he hit the ground. It appeared from that angle. If he has control, I'll tell you, it looked like he was starting to lose it before he hit down. His knee may, may have been down before the ball started, but may not have been also. I think really that may have been a break for Philadelphia. First down for the Eagles with 8.25 remaining in the first half at the 31-yard line. Low pitch to Jackson. He can't turn the corner. Dennis Folk, third-year free agent from West Virginia, and Carl Lee combined to make the tackle and actually a loss of a yard on that play. Good pursuit by the Vikings. Look at the Vikings are using now. Almost like a 4-6 defense like the Bears. Look at the three-down linemen crowded in the middle. Two linebackers over here, Matt Blair and Howard, and then the safety Brown are over here. So it's just, uh, it, it's almost like the Bears defense, the 46, although they don't stunt and loop on it as much as the Bears do. They line up in it and then play it kind of soft. But that's that 46 look. Second and 12 at the 29, and the threat of rain is no longer a threat. It has started to rain here at Veterans Stadium. No flag, the pitch out to Jackson and uh, Haddock, that is, and Tim Newton almost picked that ball off. Right now for an NFL Today report, here again is Brent Musburger. Thank you, Brent. Talk about the snow. North Dakota, 18 inches. South Dakota reports 5 inches. I know that in Minneapolis, 12 inches is still snowing throughout Minnesota. Vikings had a difficult time getting out of that airport yesterday. Three wide receivers now in for the Eagles. Herman Hunter. He's a good receiver in the backfield. Third down at 12 at the 29. Jaworski completes to Greg Garrity. But Garrity is a long way from first down yardage. Joey Browner is there to make the tackle. And it'll be fourth down until the Vikings, with their best defensive sequence of the game, will have a chance as Mike Horan will come in to punt for Philadelphia. <laughs> Deep safety position for the Vikings is Anthony Carter at the 20. Not a long kick, but a high kick and a fair catch called for by Carter 
at the 31-yard line, and 7.24 remain in the first half. We'll take a timeout. When the Cowboys make their first ever visit to Cincinnati, they shouldn't expect warm greetings from the Bengals. Get the story on the NFL today. Next Sunday on CBS, it all begins with the NFL today beginning at 12.30 Eastern time, and these are the games on tap. Washington and Philadelphia, if the Eagles win today, they must beat the Redskins, and that would make two in a row over Washington, and Philadelphia is perhaps the toughest game the rest of the season. New Orleans against St. Louis, Tampa Bay against the Vikings, who will be home at the Metrodome. Meanwhile, the Vikings want to do some business here, trailing 10 0 Have a first and 10 on their own 32, their best starting field position of the game. Wade Wilson, batted up in the air, incomplete. Reichenbach was the closest to it for a possible interception, but he was going the other way. Watch Reichenbach, number 55. He's just the elected official. He'll make a drop. Let's see who gets a hand on it. Kenny Clark's in the line of fire. Now watch Reichenbach. He's looking around. He doesn't know it's in the air. Had he seen the tip and seen it up, he may have had a chance to get to it. But Kenny Clark. Clark. Yeah. Kenny got his hand in there. We did that in chorus, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's called harmony. Seven minutes, 19 seconds to go in the first half. Viking, second and 10 now. Wilson up the middle, nearly intercepted, incomplete. Steve Jordan was the intended receiver. I'm not really sure if well, he was or not. Mike Jones was open over the middle on his slant in, and he may have been going to him. That's why the ball was so high to Jordan. Let's take a look. You see Mike Jones coming from the right of your screen across the middle, and Jordan will be coming from the left. Can't tell who he's throwing to. It could have been Mike Jones. It was a little bit deeper. That's why the ball was thrown high to Jordan. And hard. You may be right about that. Yeah. Wade Wilson is now 5 for 9 for 37 yards. It is third down and 10. At the 32-yard line. Wilson in trouble. 25-yard line. The first sack of the ball game. Reggie White and Drake Brown, each with nine and a half coming into the game, each now with ten sacks on the year. Watch the stunt, though. Brian Darby over the middle here will end up coming all the way around here and getting the pressure on the quarterback. Watch as we start it here now. Watch him see the stunt. Now he's going to clear to the outside. He'll make Wilson step up in the pocket, and that created the sack. So Greg Coleman, who had a season high of over 51 and a half yards last week against the Saints, will be kicking Evan Cooper in deep for the Eagles. That one sails. And rolls out of bounds at the 30-yard line. A 45-yard kick, better yet, no return for the Vikings. This is a big surprise in the second quarter at the Superdome. The Saints lead the Rams 9-0. And of course, as you know, the Rams are trying to fend off the 49ers going into this weekend only two games out of first place. Well, Dick, you know, I live out in the Bay Area, and the Niners play Washington, and 49ers have felt all year long that the Rams may come back to them. That's why this game is so important for them this afternoon. They still have a chance, they think, to win that division. And the 49ers still have a game against the Rams. So if they can cut it to one, they'd be sitting pretty. That's what the Eagles are doing right now. They're leading 10 and up, first and 10 on the 30-yard line with 6.40 remaining in the first half. Jaworski under some pressure. Downfield, Kenny Jackson. And he's got it. And a first down at the 42-yard line. Keith Nord makes the play, but not before Jackson is on the receiving end of a 28-yard play. A lot of patience by Jaworski this time, and great protection. Watch him now back in the pocket, step up a little bit, avoid the rush, get it to Jackson, all arm action. Willie Teal, number 37, is short, he's the cornerback, and then Nord, number 49, the free safety, had to come over. Great throw, good spot by Jaworski. The Eagles have a pair of outstanding wide receivers, of course, in Mike Quick and Kenny Jackson. What a good receiving tight end in John Spagnola. First and 10 at the 42-yard line in Viking territory. Jaworski drills this one to Mike Quick. And Quick has a first down of the 20. Carl Lee. 
Once again, it looked like the corner man, the cornerback, Carl Lee, had it short on the zone with help from the safety coming over, and Jaworski, with that strong arm of his, put it right in between the two. You know, way Mike Quick comes into the game 102 yards short of his third consecutive 1,000-yard receiving year. He has caught three for 66, and he may even go over it today. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Eagles threatening to raise the lead again. Jackson up the middle. And Ernest Jackson gets to the 15, where Tim Newton making the tackle. And the Eagles are threatening to open up this game to a 17-0 lead right now. That's the left guard here now, just to the left of Jaworski, number 73, Steve Kenny. Get a little bump on the nose tackle and continue on downfield, and Ernest Jackson actually runs into the back of him downfield. Good job by Kenny. That's what Jackson has done today. Gain of six, second down and four. Ball at the 14-yard line. runs into his own man and the play breaks down and a loss on the play of perhaps a yard. I think that was Steve Kenny again who tripped up on a pull back there and created the havoc in the backfield. David Howard gets credited with the tackle. But if we can see what happened here ground level. Kenny again the guard on the side. Yes he is on a pull and he trips over the feet of the ball carrier right there goes down in front of him. Well, Kenny's been in on two tackles the last two plays and he's an offensive guard but he's, <laughs> he's hustling out there in front. That'll help his stats that's for sure. <laughs> Third and four for Philadelphia. The Eagles, six and six. Now are going to call, let's see, there's, there is a timeout being called by Philadelphia. Timeout. And while we have a timeout, let's remind you that next Saturday, one of the great traditions in college football, the Army-Navy game. They can place right across the way from where we are now. Actually, that That's takes right, place it's here now. That's right. Where are we? Across, it <laughs> takes place right down there. Army's headed for the Peach Bowl. They've had one of their strongest years, and they'll get to see Navy fine running back Napoleon McCallum. Next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern. You used to listen to Army games in Idaho when you were growing up, didn't you? The one radio station in Boise every Saturday, every Saturday yeah. afternoon. Billy Blanchard, Glenn Davis, those teams, they were big then. I was little. Army Navy next week. Ron Jaworski took over in the fifth game of the season, started shaky. Randall Cunningham, the rookie from UNLV, came in, had his problems, and as you mentioned, the Eagles were rejuvenated with Jaws. Well, you know what? They said that, that Jaws won a lot of respect by not complaining when he was benched and by helping Cunningham, and he said that the benching was the low point of my career. He said, I felt like I was being made a scapegoat for what had happened, the losses in the first three games, but he came back and, and proved that the... He's got a lot of, lot of mileage left in that body and that arm. Third down and four at the 14. The clocks are out here at Veterans Stadium, 4.49, unofficially left. The Eagles have used up a timeout. Inside handoff to Herman Hunter. And Hunter is hit and hit hard. And a fine play by David Howard who played in the USFL, came out of nowhere apparently to make a crunching hit on the rookie Herman Hunter. Yeah, Howard is the right linebacker over here on the right side. Let's take a peek now. Steve Kenny, the guy we've been talking about, the guard will pull, try to get the block on him, but to no avail. Howard's going to come on in. There he comes up, eludes that block, and makes a great hit. Good play by David Howard, a rookie from Cal State Long Beach who had USFL experience. Paul McFadden, who has already kicked a 29-yard field goal, will try this from 33 yards with Jaworski holding. The kick is good, and the Eagles come away with this with three more points to add to their lead. It's a 13-0 game. 13-0, the Philadelphia Eagles lead the Minnesota Vikings with approximately three minutes and a half. The clocks, as we said, were out here at Veterans Stadium, and we'll try to get an exact figure for you. In the meantime, we'll bring you up to date on other games around the NFL. Denver over Pittsburgh. Behind Elway. Cincinnati really pointed on Houston now, 28 to nothing. Still in the second quarter. 
The Patriots, who know they can move into a first place tie and perhaps a three-way tie with Miami and the Jets. Tony Eason in place of Steve Grogan. Two touchdown passes in the Browns. Lead the Giants by eight. Behind Gary Danielson in that strong running game of theirs. Danielson taking over for Kozar again last week. McFadden will kick off. We have four minutes and eight seconds, 4.08 remaining. Buster Rhymes is the man in the middle. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a five-yard penalty, and McFadden will kick it off again from the 30-yard line. Paul McFadden, of course. One of the barefooted kickers in the National Football League. Out of Youngstown State, school that produced Ron Jaworski and also John Good, the third string tight end. Three of them on this one team. Don't the Jaws really helped him a lot when he first got here. He said you know, he was nervous quite naturally. Jaworski quite naturally would be any football player's hero that came from Youngstown State. Jaworski is his holder. Helped settle him down a lot in training camp and then when he won the job. And there's been a big factor in his success. So McFadden will be kicking again. Tony Franklin had been a fixture for several years when the Eagles, of course, had their best years and went to the Super Bowl a few years ago under Dick Vermeil. Buster Rhymes, the rookie from Oklahoma, is back, but he's flanked by Alan Rice and Ted Brown. 13 to nothing in favor of the Eagles. Ryan at the 14. Out of bounds. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Coming up at halftime, Joe Montana's toughest year. And I know, Wayne, you've had a lot of talks with him. Well, no question about it. It has been a tough year. And not only did they, they blame some of the 49ers early failures on him, but he's had some personal problems, or so-called personal problems, that have been cleared up in the past week or so. Dick Vermeil and Jim Brown are in the studio at the NFL today, and of course the 49ers and the Redskins, coming up next on CBS. First and ten for the Vikings, with 3.56 remaining. In the first half, the Vikings have two timeouts left. Wade Wilson to go to the air on first down. Incomplete. Darren Nelson was the intended receiver. Vikings had a golden opportunity here in the second quarter when they had first and goal on the nine and then got the ball to the one-yard line, but they couldn't knock it over on two downs, and then Jan Stenerud missed a 19-yard field goal. So Bud Grant's Vikings remain scoreless right now. Vikings have had good success. They've won four out of five games against the Eagles in Philadelphia. They have. It's a kind of strange situation, too, where these two teams play again here in a couple of weeks. That game will be at the Metrodome, and that will be the final game of the year. Pitch to Ted Brown. Reggie Wilkes making the play at the 31-yard line. And he made a good play because he had to fight off the block of a big lineman that time, Tim Irwin, coming out to try to get the hook on it. Steady season for Reggie Wilkes. It is. He's been putting some time over there, but he's very solid against him. Taking him out on passing situations now, as you see. Third down and eight. For the Vikings. Got to take a lot of wind out of your sails when you get as close as they did and come up with nothing when it appeared as if they were going to Sammy White is in as the third wide receiver. Seven defensive backs for the Eagles. Countering that. Wilson fires. Incomplete, Anthony Carter on the low pass. Herbert was the defensive and his fourth down. Vikings just can't generate any kind of offense, although, as we said, they came close one time. Missing just a little bit there. Nelson drops the ball, and then that one was off just a little bit. Could have been caught. Would have been a great catch by A.C. But really the first really poor ball, I guess, that, that Wade Wilson has thrown here this afternoon. He's been fairly sharp. Greg Coleman will be punting for the third time, and Evan Cooper is back for the Eagles, who with three minutes to go have an opportunity to add to their 13 to nothing edge. Yeah. Yeah. Halftime here, they're going to be celebrating the return of many of the stars of the 1960 Philadelphia Eagles NFL title team. Coleman kicking back, and Evan Cooper with a late 
fair catch inside the 25-yard line. A 46-yard punt for a man who really, we talked about Wes Hopkins going to the Pro Bowl. What about this man? Oh, he really should go. He's having a, a Pro Bowl year, no doubt about it. That was a 46-yard punt. He came into this game averaging 44 yards. That was the best in the NFC. And the net return is just 38. He's a veteran, of course, been around a while, nine years, and so adept now at handling the ball. He can do magic with it, put it out in the corners, and kind of pooch it and stop it. Great athlete, too, in his own right. Now, Buck Grant said a few years ago, I could bring in new kickers, but you're better off sticking with one. you got too many adjustments changing all the time. Paid off, that move. The ball's at the 24-yard line of Philadelphia. First and 10, Jaworski up the middle. Good catch by Kenny Jackson. It was a hard pass, and Jackson held on to it. Chris Dolman making the play. That was that middle area that Jackson was talking about under the linebackers, and a hand for Kenny Jackson on the play. And if you'll watch the, the linebacker now, over on the, the right side, Dolman, he'll make a deep drop, and Jackson will be under him. Number 56, right there. Here comes Dolman, 56. So he goes down and looks for that open area, whether it's behind the linebackers or in front of him, makes the adjustment, and then Jaworski finds it. Kenny Jackson, who has caught a pass for 28 yards, another for 14. It's second down and two after that eight-yard play at the 32-yard line. Ernest Jackson gets tripped up, but comes up with a second effort play and a first down. At the 37, Mark Mullaney making the tackle. And it was Tim Newton who first penetrated. Watch Doug Martin penetrate, though, too. Also from uh, the right side of Jaworski, number 79. He comes through a gap right there, gets an arm out. That was a pretty good run that time. To break that tackle and pick up the yardage. Ernest Jackson has gained 56 yards. We said, would you like to gain 100 against a team other than St. Louis? He said, why not? He said, both of his efforts, over 100 have been against the Cardinals. First and 10 at the 37. This will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Michael Haddock slicing off the left tackle and brings it up to the 40-yard line, a gain of about four. Chris Martin and Tim Newton make the stop, and our two-minute warning is upon us here in Philadelphia. Well, you never would realize Wes Hopkins is missing from the Philadelphia Eagles defense the way they played, and they moved the ball nicely through to the 2-13-0. to No question about it. This is the kind of game they wanted, too, is to run the ball a little bit, not put a lot of pressure on Jaworski and the pass-receiving unit. And hope that they, they could run against Minnesota, control the ball, use up time in the half. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Jaworski has completed 10 of 12 passes. Second down and six on his own 41-yard line. Herman Hunter is in the backfield and will have a penalty. Jaworski wanted to get off a free play, but it, he couldn't do it. Doug Martin and Keith Millard might have jumped in the middle. Encroachment, number 75 on the defense, still second down. Millard it was. He's a hustler, he's a battler. And Steve Kenny told us yesterday, you can't rest against this guy. He won't take a down off. He's coming at you every time he's in there. Playing his first year for the Vikings. Rookie out of Washington, but uh, he was a great player in the USFL. First round draft pick who went to the USFL. Signed with him in August. Second down and one now as a result of the penalty. And apparently a first down for Haddock. Make it Herman Hunter with 1.45 to go. Block running. Eagles still have two timeouts remaining, leading 13 to nothing. Want to at least get in position for, for Paul McFadden again, who kicked two field goals. Right. Jaworski, caught by Spagnola. Fine catch by Spagnola, and the Eagle receivers are holding on to him today. That'll be a first down at the 36-yard line. John Turner making the play. You're right and call it a fine catch. The only thing better than the catch was the fact that he could hold it. The catch alone, if he hadn't been hit, would have been a good one. But to hang on to it and take that kind of lick from Turner as he came down made it even better. Leading the Eagles in receiving coming into today's game was 50. He had a career high of 12 receptions this year against the New Orleans Saints. 
He wears that thing around his neck. He missed the entire 83 season with a neck. Didn't know a cervical problem. Didn't know whether he'd ever play again or not. Had to come out and find out for himself. He said that first hit in training camp in 84, it, he was going to find out one way or another. He took a good hit, hit a, hit a dummy, came into it full force and said, I'm going to be okay. I'll be able to continue. Didn't know until that time. The Eagles call the timeout. They have one left with 1.16 on the clock. Another field goal here would force the Vikings to be three scores behind going into intermission. The Eagles has, have averaged more than seven and a half yards on first down. I'm just surprised they don't try to just get six points all at once in the next couple plays. Jaworski up the middle, incomplete. A lot of receivers were crossing there. Greg Garrity appears to have been the intended receiver as Jaworski got knocked down. I think those crossing patterns are extremely tough against a team that's in the zone defense and plays a lot of zone. You got guys crossing your zone. Sometimes there's two of them in your zone. You don't know which one to favor. Always been tough against uh, teams that play zone defense or the crossing patterns. Notice how the Eagles' big problem in recent years have been protecting Jaworski. They allowed only one sack against Dallas, who had 47 coming in the last week's game. They have improved a lot, that offensive line. When they're all together and healthy, they're a pretty solid unit. No sacks against Jaws today so far. Second down and 10 on the 35 is pressure. Jaworski gets hit and has to let go of the ball when it was anyone's ball. And there was some decent pressure on Jaworski, put up by Doug Martin and Neil Elshire. Martin moves in to tackle on the right side. Elshire will be outside of him. Right side here. Let's see what they do. Just straight ahead. A good spin move by Martin. Did you see that? He started outside, spun inside, and was right in Jaworski's face. Good quick move by number 79. Doug Martin is second on the team with four sacks. Remember, he led the NFL in sacks three years ago. Only had one last year. He's their best defensive one. I talked to Paul Wiggins last week before the game. He said he's a, he's a quality person on that line. Both ways against the run and the pass. Third down and 10 at the 35. 109 on the clock. Jaworski. The quick. Quick. Out of bounds and a first down. A big 26-yard play. Isaac Holden, John Turner made the play on Mike Swift. Yes, now watch John Turner come over. I almost think, Dick, if he'd have been playing the ball, not the man, he might have had a better shot at this not looking up at all. That's a great throw, too, by Jaworski. Wick has caught four for 92 yards. He may go over a 1,000 today. Looks like he wants to. Maddox and Hunter are the running back. First and goal on the eighth for the Eagles. Trying to break this game wide open here in the first half. Jaworski up the middle. Quick. Is That's his ninth touchdown this year. He has now caught a touchdown pass in six consecutive games. Mike Wick. They clear things out for him on the right side, and he comes in over the middle from the left. Watch him coming into the left ear screen right there. The worst, he had an easy throw to make. That's the easiest throw a quarterback can make is over the middle short. No hands in his face that time. Had a, a great vision lane, and there was a six point. McFadden with a conversion. It's good. And with 57 seconds remaining in the first half, the Philadelphia Eagles own this ball game, leading the Minnesota Vikings 20 to nothing. Watch the receivers over here on this side of the screen. Spagnola clearing. Haddock clearing. Quick underneath the two of them for the six points. Quick has caught passes for 999 yards this year. He has 1,000 yards, two consecutive seasons. The last man to do that was Tommy McDonald, who's one of the people being honored at halftime as a member and one of the great members of that 1960 championship team. It's going to mean a lot to this guy right here. And I think, it does. you can tell, this field of team has pumped up a little bit, I think, because of today that that 1960 team is here. Remember when we did the opening game of the season and 
in uh, Minnesota, when in Minneapolis, when they were honoring the the, the 25 year anniversary of the Vikings, and how pumped up this Viking team was against the 49ers. Well, they've kind of got it turned around against them today because the Eagles are in that same situation. That 1960 team was the only team ever to beat Vince Lombardi in a championship game. Buster Rhymes returning McFadden's kickoff. And a good return by Buster Rhymes, carrying it out to the 34 where Evan Cooper makes the tackle and a look at the scoring drive. And as you mentioned, Wayne, they weren't just settling for a field goal, apparently. They wanted a strike for six, and they got it. And it was a good drive. They just they took their time, and they didn't, you know, the great thing about Jaworski, now he's such a veteran, Dick, is that he really doesn't take any chances with the ball if, he, if he's got the time back there. He doesn't throw it where it doesn't belong, and you saw that on that drive. Brent, Dick Vermeil, Jim Brown, scores and highlights coming up at the half, and we're 51 seconds away from that. So a tough spot for Wade Wilson, who's starting to play for Tommy Kramer and finds his team down 20 to nothing. Wilson. And the pass is caught at the 40 by Mike Jones, who made a good catch with Elbert Fowles all over. Tough situation now for any quarterback and any offense. He just knows you got to throw. Minnesota still has two timeouts left. Wilson's pass is short. He was going for a tight end. Steve Jordan stops the clock with 29 seconds remaining. It'll be third down and three. Hurry that throw just a little bit that time because the pocket was starting to slack, but collapse on him. They're right back on him about a yard or so away, and he really couldn't step forward and get on the throw what he needed. Wade Wilson started five games last year, played in eight. He has been in three games this year coming into this one, but this is his first start of 1985. He is 6 of 13 for 44 yards. The ball is at the Vikings 41, third and three. Wilson. Anthony Carter was his man, but he wasn't even close. It'll be fourth down. And uh, tempers and temperatures rise a bit amongst the linemen as Greg Coleman comes in to kick the ball. 25 seconds remaining. Evan Cooper will go back for the Eagles. They have a, a short man in safety position, Ray Ellis as well, at the 35-yard line. The Eagles still have one timeout left. Who knows what kind of field position they may have. And maybe a chance for more damage. This is a good fine kick by Coleman. Evan Cooper inside the 20 is hit hard. At the 27-yard line and a good play by Allen Wright. We talked about Coleman in that situation right there where a pretty good kick off 40 yards and 8 yard return on that one. 16 seconds remain. And the Eagles have it at the 27 yard line. And one timeout left. Vince Coleman's cousin. National League Rookie of the Year, Greg Coleman. But if they had a race, who would win? I don't know. You know Greg, <laughs> Greg Coleman uh, ran a 13-4 high hurdles. That was the fifth best in the world back in 75. Oh, I think Greg would beat him. <laughs> 15 seconds to go. Ernest Jackson. Goes up outside, and Ernest Jackson is knocked out of bounds. Stopping the clock with eight seconds to go by Carl Lee. And a good game here. Had him napping a little bit, I think, that time. Expecting pass. See what happened over on the right side. Jackson will bounce it out here. Let's see what happened to the linebacker, 56 Dolman. He was caught up and didn't get off the block, so he lost his containment. The Viking defense was surprised somewhat with that play selection. And a first down for the Eagles at their own 47-yard line. Jackson already with 75 yards. Keep in mind, the Eagles led Atlanta 17-0 after three quarters here at Veterans Stadium a few weeks ago and had to struggle and win the game in overtime. Eight seconds remaining. Jaworski. Downtown. And it's caught by Mike Quick. No, oh, it's intercepted. Intercepted by Willie Teal. It looked like Quick had made the reception. Sure did. I think he took it away on the way down. 
And now, Kemper's player, and we have some problems over there at the Philadelphia side, which is not the side of the field you want to do all that, if you're a Viking. Willie Teal with an interception. I thought Quick had caught the ball. Well, Quick has that great leaping ability. He gets up, he's the highest one and has it, but Teal takes it away from him on the way down. Great interception by Teal, his second interception, but that ends the first half. Marion Campbell's Eagles 20. Yoda, who reminds you to get more from life. Buckle up. Who could ask for anything more? De Beers. A diamond is forever. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Has the first down of the 40-yard line. It wasn't easy, however, as Anthony Griggs makes the tackle. Just the tough thing about any, any quarterback coming in is, is how many snaps did you get that week in practice? Even Wade Wilson said, you know, I didn't find out until Friday that I was starting. You know, Tommy Kramer didn't practice the entire week. Team Wade Wilson didn't get a whole lot of practice snaps, and so uh, you got to know that Steve Bono didn't get a ton of them either. So he's coming in, you know, without having thrown a lot during the week, without being used to being under the center, handing the ball off, just a little thing for the quarterback needs. All backup quarterbacks will stay to you when they come in. Well, I, had a, I had a week of practice, so I'm in pretty good shape. And Bono's going to call a timeout. Didn't like what he sees, so the Vikings call a timeout early. And we'll be back to Veterans Stadium in a moment. Wayne Walker mentioned Steve Bono, who's the quarterback now for the Vikings, is rangy at 6'3 and 211 pounds. He's from Norristown, Pennsylvania, so he makes his NFL debut right in his backyard in Philadelphia. Perhaps, you know, would have been drafted higher, but had some injury problems in college, broken leg, injured shoulder. So, you know, didn't get all the playing time at UCLA that, that you would expect because he was in and out of there with injuries, and that's why they, they probably didn't draft him higher than he is. He was redshirted one year as well. First and 10 at the 40-yard line following the Vikings' timeout. Bono, under pressure, and Gary Cobb. Not much Bono to do about that. No, you, it, it looked like Cobb wasn't even touched as he came in blitzing from the right side. Great Cobb, the linebacker over on the right side. You'll see him right here. Stand-up formation come right on in. Let's see if he takes an outside rush. And the end release let him go. And then there was no back there to pick him up. So Bono was in a ton of trouble without Cher to help him. Second sack of the ball game by the Eagles. <laughs> and Jaworski has remained clean in this game. Vikings have not gotten a hit. Second down and 19 following that loss. Back to the 31-yard line. And there's the Statue of Liberty play. Darren Nelson has slowed up. And can't get away. the tackle penetrated nicely you know on any well-coached defense you have stay-at-home people people responsible for reverses and bootleg this is great brown the defensive end watch him come upfield not take the fake not go down in here but stay home right in this area and make that play now those responsibilities on reverses he comes across there he is right there maintains his leverage and his position and he's the one that fouls it up Huffles back and gets in on it. So Bono has lost 15 yards on two plays. And overthrows Darren Nelson, who is wide open. And it's fourth down. I mentioned it was going to be tough for Wade Wilson at halftime. It's almost double tough now for Steve Bono because he really no experience whatsoever. Well, what's the purpose then, uh, Wayne? You put a quarterback in and he plays one half, finds himself trailing, and now the third string quarterback comes in what will he accomplish other than just game experience in this tough spot well i think they'll be able to to, to judge how he's reacting in this situation look at him in a game condition how does he handle himself it's, it's an evaluation time right now i would think greg coleman will be punting to evan cooper cooper good field position carries it back on the return to the 47-yard line, Ted Rossnagel on the stop. The Eagles are starting from their best field position of the ball game. 
their own 46. Ron Jaworski completed 13 of 18 in the first half for over 200 yards, 204 to be exact. Two touchdown passes and one interception. And he's been a changed man since Sid Gilman came back. So you see, when Gilman came in, my confidence won up. Because, because Gilman, the veteran coach, knows his strength and my weaknesses, he said. It kind of made me another person. Ernest Jackson. Close to midfield, not quite. Jackson coming into the second half with 75 yards in the first half. Tackle is by Chris Martin. Tight game in New York, where the Browns lead the Giants with the Meadowlands 21-20. Bill Sims to Bobby Johnson brought the Giants closer. Denver over the Steelers, 10-6 in the third. Houston coming back to trailing Cincinnati 28-13. One game separates everyone in that AFC Central Division. Second down and seven at the 49-yard line. Green comes down here, and Jaworski is back for the first time today. Chris Martin got in on a blitz from the right side. He had a hold of Jaws. Let's watch now. It'll be your left. Short drop. There he comes in right there. Actually, it was really a good job downfield. Nobody to throw to, and he had to pull it down. And by that time, Martin coming in on a delayed blitz from the from the left side got in. Loss of three on the play. It'll be third down and 13. I think it rained here in the east for a steady week. Back to the 43-yard line. Jaworski with time. Kenny Jackson with the play. And a first down at the 35-yard line. Big day so far for Kenny Jackson. That's good for 22 yards. We've got uh, a great play that time really by Willie Teal, but he just missed the ball. He was in pretty good shape as Jackson ran a deep turn. Watch here. Good protection for Jaws. Watch Teal number 37 come around, take a swipe at the ball, and just absolutely miss it because he had the ball playing perfectly. Four catches for Kenny Jackson. First and ten for the Eagles on the Vikings 35. Jaworski throws it up for grabs like it's rugby. Chris Dolman was putting pressure on, and he just fi fired it away, and the Vikings are claimed. Look at his jersey there. <laughs> up around his neck. I claim too. I never understand why that's not intentional grounding when a quarterback does that, throws it out of bounds with nobody near it. And Mark Dennard, the center for the Eagles, is shaken up. Green Bay is leading. New England is leading. They're at halftime at Indianapolis. And the Saints continue to lead the Rams, who are within a touchdown and an extra point of taking the lead in the third quarter at the Superdome. Mark Dennard, the former Miami Dolphin, who's been a scrappy and steady workman-like center for the Eagles, shaken up. Jerry Fury from Syracuse in his third year would be the backup if Dennard can't go on. Doesn't look like he can. Well, you saw that the L.A. Rams are losing to New Orleans. Coming into this weekend, the Rams in the NFC West led San Francisco by two games. The Rams are losing, and that's good news for this team, the San Francisco 49ers, who will try to creep closer if possible to the Rams as they go against the Washington Redskins, who will be no easy foe at RFK Stadium coming up next here on CBS. Kansas certainly rallied around their young quarterback, Jay Schrader, since Joe Theismann went down. 49ers, though you know, with a young quarterback like that in that ball game, will probably show him a lot of blitzes and stunts early and try to get to him right off the bat. Should be interesting. There is Jerry Fury. You can play guard or center, and that usually can win you a job on team. Second and ten at the 35. Just about five minutes gone by here in the third quarter. 20 to nothing Eagles looking for more points. Jaworski to quick. Inside the 20. Another first down. A 16-yard gain. Carl Lee making the tackle, and for Mike Quick, pass reception number six. Great timing on this pattern now. Quick takes him down, he's driving Carl Lee deep, 
And then the minute he turns around, the ball is in the air before he makes his turn, and Jaworski has it right to him right on time. He only needed a yard, and he got 15 more than he needed as Mike Quick is going over 1,000 yards in receiving. He's got 116, and that is the third straight year Mike Quick has done that, and that is a Philadelphia more than he needed as Mike Quick is going over 1,000 yards in receiving. He's got 116. And that is the third straight year Mike Quick has done that, and that is a Philadelphia Eagle record. He's on a roll, too. Nine touchdowns in his last nine games. First and ten at the 20. Adams. Hit hard, trying to go outside. Viking defense playing like a 0-0. David Howard, number 99, making the tackle. down and nine at the 19 yard line keep in mind that Mike Quick's career best eight passes he had eight last week got six right now Jaworski under pressure on a blitz gets it off to Spagnola Spagnola still going as a first down inside the 10 Turner and Joey Brown are on the tackle. And look at the pressure in the middle, though, from Tim Newton, number 96. He beats the block immediately. The theory kind of misplayed him and jobs with enough time barely to get it out to Spagnola and just a, a real tough run here by the tight end. Good composure by Jaworski, who had 300 pounds of Tim Newton right in his face. First and goal at the eight. Mark Dennard has a sprained knee, questionable as to whether he returns. Jerry Fury has been the center. The Eagles lead 20 to nothing and threatening again. Ernest Jackson. And he can't get by Joey Browner. Joey Browner is the guy we talked about, Wes Hopkins. Dick did a, a great safety for the Eagles, having a, such a great year. So is Joey Browner having a good year. Browner will be up here on the... Let's check him out right here and watch his force on this. He's been doing this all season long. He reads the block of the tight end, blocking down, gets outside in good position, takes on a block, the lineman fights that off and makes a great play. He's having that kind of year that Wes Hopkins is having that could get you in the Pro Bowl. Second down and goal at the eight. Quick. Jaworski. Incomplete, he was going for quick, and Browner was defending. Third down. You always know when when the guys are having a good year is when Dick we go in and, and talk to the opposing team when we get ready for the game. When they mention a couple guys from the other team, like if anybody's playing the Vikings now, they mention Joey Browner. That, uh, that when we did the Green Bay game, they mentioned it. They mentioned him here. Third down and goal at the eight-yard line with 7.39 remaining. In the third quarter, Philadelphia known for defense, doing it both ways today. Jaworski, knocked down, Spagnola, the intended receiver, and David Howard. He's going to be good. We've seen him two weeks in a row. He's been in on a lot of plays. Very aggressive. Well, that's the way they talk about him. In, in a lot of plays, and that's why they like him so much. They, they called him super active. And he gets around, and he really fooled them after they got him in the supplementary because they didn't think he was as active as he was. You saw right there that he can move and, and play the passing game as well as the run. It is fourth down and eight, and the Eagles will try to stretch their lead to 23 to nothing. This will be a 25-yard attempt. Jaworski holding for McFadden, who has kicked two so far. And now McFadden has kicked three. So Paul McFadden with a 25-yard field goal, and the Eagles lead it now 23 to nothing. Danny Manning, Chris Washburn. Manning for Kansas, Washburn for NC State. Two sophomores, Manning 6'11". He handles the ball so well, Dick, they said he could play point guard if they needed him. <laughs> and a great freshman in Walker Lambiati for Jim Valvano's Wolfpack, NC State. 
That's next week on CBS. Buster Rhymes on the return from the 10 and gets tripped up. Otherwise, he might have gone all the way. He's going to be a player. Number 88, Buster Rhymes. He's been impressive to us every time we've seen him on kickoff returns and the breaking him in. He was a running back, of course, at Oklahoma. Had a great kick last week in a New Orleans game. I think he's got a good career. Anthony Griggs was the man who tripped him up. Fourth round draft pick, and so the Vikings now going again with Steve Bono, who was sacked, put under a lot of pressure, and you can do that when in your box. The head 23-0. 7.21 remaining in the third quarter. 23 to nothing, Philadelphia. Darren Nelson. Mike Reichenbach and Ken Clark combined, and you won't find two tougher men against the run at the nose tackle followed up by the inside backer. Best tackler on the team right there is what Marion Campbell said, number 55 Reichenbach. He said, when you get to him, when the runner gets to him, it's the end of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Gain of two, second down and eight at the 39-yard line. Biggest gain for the Eagles if they go on and hold this lead and they give every indication that they will they've got the Washington Redskins next week then San Diego on the road and Minnesota on the road Bono overthrows Mike Jones you know how many times you see that when a young guy comes in and getting his chance and he's so stoked up he's got adrenaline going through every vein he's got in that body and you know, excited and just overthrowing everything. It's like a you know, young pitcher comes in a game and tries to overpower every batter. Yeah, there was a guy named Sandy Koufax who did that for the Dodgers when he first broke in, and uh, I have a hunch he learned how to uh, master that a little bit. Yeah, another guy named Nolan Ryan the same way. That's right. Exactly. Third down and eight. Buster Rhymes and Anthony Carter come out to the left. Bono, incomplete, he hasn't come close yet. Mike Jones was the intended receiver and Roy L. Young was the closest to him. Bono has missed on his three passing attempts. It's fourth down and Greg Coleman coming in to kick away and Evan Cooper will go back in deep safety position. Well, you see what he did that time, Dick, you know, a young quarterback, he got excited and he took his drop and he really didn't get set to throw that ball. He threw it while he was still backpedaling, didn't, you know, didn't throw it off the back foot and stepped forward. He was Momentum was going backwards when he threw, and that's why that one was short. There's he, Tommy Kramer in the middle. Excuse me, Wayne. Yep, no, he just wasn't set to throw that time. It's good to have a guy like Kramer on the sideline to tell you a few things, though, too. Coleman's putt is short. On the run is Evan Cooper. Done at the 41-yard line by David Huffman. Next week on the NFL Today, John Madden Strain's going to roll into the studio. And John Madden in the studio with Brent, the Greek. Irv will follow by these games. Tampa Bay, Minnesota. New Orleans and St. Louis. Washington and Philadelphia. And it all begins at 12.30 Eastern. First and 10 at the 41. Ernest Jackson. Goes nowhere. And that was David Howard. You know, you look at the Vikings and you look at Howard and you look at Chris Dolman and some of the young people they have on the line like Tim Newton and there, that defense is going to be a group to be reckoned with. They made that playoff that, that Bears looked at 46 with two linebackers over here on the right side. Dolman got across and forced it in and then look at there. Howard right there to make the play. They stacked both outside linebackers over the tight end. And it worked for him that time. Second and 12 now. Back to the 39-yard line. Jaworski finds Mike Quick, who can't get away from two defenders, and ends up picking up five yards on the play. Carl Lee and Joey Browner were right there with Mr. Quick. Vikings had the worst defense in the NFL last year. right there and a 
sideline, the defensive coordinator you're looking at. Third down and eight at the 43. Jaworski, five, Herman Hunter. They have a first down at midfield. Keith Nord was with them all the way, and Hunter has been quite the rookie as a pass receiver out of the backfield. Yeah, that's basically why they drafted him, to use him in these, you know, nickel situations, the pass situation. He ran a circle pattern right there. Keith Nord in on the play. As we said once before, that the easiest throw a quarterback can make is that short route over the middle. They're going to measure to see whether Hunter has the first down. When you look at those statistics, when was the last time a running back averaged 15.6 yards per catch? You know what he did in college? Average 10 yards every time he touched the ball. Or whether it was a running play, pass reception, or kickoff return. They're short, and it's fourth down, and Mike Moran will come in and punt. Anthony Carter will go back to return. There's Moran, and of course, the crowd didn't like it, but there's no other choice. You don't want to play games with a 23-0 lead and have something backfire and give momentum to the other team. When they've been going nowhere most of the afternoon, and that's been the Vikings' story. Horan. Carter. Trying to run out of trouble. And Anthony Carter to the 30. And Carter is out of bounds. At the 47-yard line and knocked out of bounds by the punter, Mike Horan, a 40-yard return. Well, i tell you a couple things right here that really showed you his athletic ability. Number one, the fact that he watch him catch this ball and get away immediately. This was a tremendously high kick by Horan. Look at the pressure right here. He gets it right there, and then in a minute he catches it. He's away after one step. And then he fooled everybody with his speed, got to the sideline, and set him up in good field position. Nelson had been the punt returner for the Vikings before he was shaken up last week and it looks like the Vikes may have a new one and Anthony Carter called for a fair catch twice last week but this 40-yard return as you pointed out gives them uh, quite a weapon back there. Well he's, he's been tough to bring down in his career we talked about Mike Quick what he can do after he catches the ball in the secondary Anthony Carter much the same way and we'll see it more and more as he gets used to this offense and they get used to him. Best starting field position of the day for the Vikings. They have a couple of Baylor's second-year running backs. Alfred Anderson in motion and Alan Rice back there. Rice gets the call and changes direction nicely. And Rice, penalty marker down. First down for Rice before the penalty. A gain of 12 yards and a good direction move, but it's all going to be for North. Red Cassis will tell us. Illegal motion, number 46 on the offense, still first down. Check right here now, we'll see what happened on that play. Go in motion, turn on up. I was in motion before the ball was snapped. Going towards the line of scrimmage. First and 15 back at the 42. He can do that in Canada, can't he? Wide receiver screen. Anthony Carter. And hit hard by Reggie White. Reggie White played in the USFL. It's been a long season for him. Yeah, I said that he might be getting tired, right? He said, I've played a lot of games this year and might be getting tired. Marion Campbell went up to him after about the third time he'd read that in the paper, Reggie White said that, and said, Marion said, I offered to give him a rest. <laughs> he said, I haven't heard that since. Morton Anderson with four field goals. The difference in that game, the Giants have edged in front of Cleveland. Eric Schubert with a 35-yard field goal in the third quarter. Second down and 11 at the 46 here for the Vikings with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Bono's pass almost intercepted was intended for Carter and it was Herman Edwards who almost came up with the ball for the Eagles. Yeah, so much to learn for a young quarterback. Dick, you see Bono come out that time and all he did was lock in on that primary receiver, didn't look anybody off and a veteran like Herman Edwards out there at cornerback took advantage of it. Denver leading Pittsburgh 10-9 in the third quarter. Gary Anderson has three field goals in that game. Cincinnati rolling over Houston 42-13 in that ball game. Boomer Esiason has three touchdown passes in that one. 
Third and 11 at the 46. Just under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Steve Bono in relief of Wade Wilson. Has four wide receivers. It is the heck. And goes to the back. Right. Covering on the play was Andre Waters. And it'll be fourth down. Let me ask you, Wayne, is, is Bud Grant thrown in the towel with these moves today with uh, not Wade Wilson so much, but Bono coming in? Well, we found out you know, that really there's nothing wrong with Wade Wilson, no injuries or anything like that. You'd think the score at halftime was 20 to nothing. You know, here a few weeks ago, Philadelphia led, what, 21 to nothing at well, halftime? 17, let's have three. Yeah. And uh, came back and had to go to overtime. I, I, hate, I hate to see thrown in the towel. I think, you know, more and more we, we talk evaluating, but... They still had a chance to win at halftime, that was for sure, so you make your own judgment. Evan Cooper is back and Greg Coleman, who's been a very busy Viking today. Good return possibilities for Cooper, but the man who stops him there is David Howard. Well, next Saturday on CBS Sports, the cadets and the midshipmen square off once again. This is the 86th renewal of the Army-Navy game played right here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. But you used to listen to those Army games when you were growing up in Idaho. I want to talk about that some more. I also do know that it's taking place right here. Yeah. Final game for Napoleon McCallum, who's been a Heisman candidate and one of the great running backs. Of course, Joe Bellino won a Heisman trophy for Navy. Roger Staubach did as a quarterback. You remember Roger. First and second. On the 27-yard line. Breaks out, first down for the Eagles to the 39, Carl Lee making the tackle, and the Philadelphia Eagles have all cylinders working today, a gain of 12. Talking about Heisman winners from the, I don't want to slight Pete Dawkins from Army, who was a great winner for the cadets. First and ten at the 38-yard line. Jaworski, gone deep, going high is quick, and defending is Willie Teal, who made up the interception to end the first half. Looks like a jump ball out there when those two guys are gone. When you got a jump ball, you got to take your chances with Mike Quick. Really, never seen a wide receiver be able to go downfield at full speed and then, without changing stride, get up in the air as high as he can. Look at that. He gets up so quickly and so high after running at full speed, he doesn't seem like he ever has to gather himself. He just gets up. Second down and ten. One fifty-five showing. Quick. Going over a thousand yards. First Eagle to do it three straight years. 31 touchdowns in the last three seasons for Mike Quick. Haddock. Hole. Haddock. Within a yard or so of first down yardage. Carl Lee uh, coming up to make the stop. And we have an injured player down. And it looks to be Carl Lee who made the tackle. Carl Lee, of course. Ran an interception against the Saints last week, starting in place of Rufus Best, who's on injured reserve. And he is taken up. Bud Grant coming back. Been a great coach, but he still goes duck hunting. Yeah, I tell you what, he stays, he stays pretty loose. Let's see how Carl Lee left of the screen on this injury. Now look at the lead back now. Number 41, Ernest Jackson. He gets downfield about five or six yards before he makes contact with anyone. That's Matt Blair. Lee comes in from the side and looks perhaps like he caught a, a leg or a knee in the helmet and perhaps got it twice. Millard might have kicked him, and uh, there's Lee coming off the field. Out of Marshall. Not many pro football players have come out of that West Virginia institution. Third down and two at the 46. Ooh. 
Jaworski. And this time Spagnola, hit by David Howard. Howard ought to get a game ball in defeat today. I was just going to say, he really moves around when the ball's in the air. He can really close tremendously quick. He's not playing like it's 23 to nothing. Those little waves go from his brain to his feet pretty fast, don't they? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Vikings are, as a team, are not playing like they're out of it and 5-7 and seven going to 5-8 and eight on the year. They're playing hard. Well, they've had a couple of disheartening this, this performances the past couple of weeks where they perhaps didn't put as much into the game as they felt they should have, so they're doing that here this afternoon. One bounce to Mike Horan, who gets off a bad kick. Goes out of bounds. He did what he could. And the Vikings are going to get some good field position with 1.11 to go in the third and still unable to score, trailing 23-0. Well, the Saints now lead the Rams 19-3. The Rams had to run into a team with a new coach, Wade Phillips. Bobby Bear to Eric Martin for the score. So looking at the NFC West, what do we see, Wayne? Well, look at that right there. They're going to come back to him, it looks like for sure, with the 49ers now with a chance to close to within one of the Rams. And, of course, they play against San Francisco and the Rams do play. San Francisco already owns one win over L.A. But coming up next, the 49ers need that win against the Redskins, who are, of course, fighting for a playoff berth in their own right. Of course, that Ram Saint game is not history yet. They could come back. First and 10 at the 41. Bono is going deep, but for who? Nearly intercepted. Roynell Young covering Mike Jones downfield. Jones did a nice job of preventing the interception on this one. He was almost a defensive back on that play. Take a look at it right here. Bono really unloaded on this one. Showed that he's got a strong arm. Ronell Young in great shape here on Jones. Now watch Jones turns into the defensive back and gets a hand in there and knocks it away. Bono is now one for seven for five yards. And Roynell Young who had missed a few games this year with Albert Fowles taking his place has been playing with a cast on his left forearm. He suffered a hairline fracture against the St. Louis Cardinals. He went to the Pro Bowl a few years back. By the way, today celebrating his 28th birthday. And I even hear the cheers for him. What a tough year last year, though. You know, he had one of those, those groin injuries, the deep groin poles that have uh, that even cops guys retire they don't seem bad but you just can't play with them Ted Hendricks was one that, that had that at the end of his career and really had to retire he could probably play another year or so Jim Plunkett was a guy that missed almost an entire season because of that well one thing the Eagles have they have a world of depth in the second day Roy now Young leaves the field We've already seen that depth today with Greenard Wilson starting at free safety in place of the injured Wes Hopkins and Elbert Fowles replaces him. Replaces Roy Nell Young. So it's second down and 10 at the 41 yard line. It's a little over a minute to go in the third quarter. Bono looking to Find the receiver, overthrows Anthony Carter. Wasn't even close. Covering with fouls and Ray Ellis. And it's third down. The Vikings, besides going with Steve Bono, the rookie from UCLA, are going with two second-year Baylor running backs. Alfred Anderson, a second-round draft pick last year, and Allen Wright, the fifth round. And you can see the Vikings quarterback story versus the Eagles. No surprise there. Now, you know, the tough thing that we talked about, the practice time. And, you know, Bono has, has probably gotten much practice time all year long. Any practice time he's got has been running, you know, the other team's offense against Minnesota's defense. Been simulating being Ron Jaworski. Really, all the throwing he's done, probably 90%, hasn't even been his own team's pattern. In David Huffman in his left tackle in place of Curtis Rouse. Third and 10 at the 41. Bono's pass. Incomplete, it was headed for Allen Wright. Covering on the play was Evan Cooper. So it'll be fourth down, and so the Vikings' last seven possessions have resulted in punts. The Eagles struck early. Paul McFadden with a 29-yard field goal. John Spagnola caught a 28-yard touchdown pass from Jaworski. It was 10-0 after one quarter. McFadden with a field goal, and Mike Quick 
Caught a touchdown pass for the sixth great game. And McFadden added another field goal, and that's how he got to 23. Here's Cooper. You saw Coleman. Good kick by Coleman. Sending Cooper back to the 11th. And guess who? David Howard, who's been on a million plays today, brings down Evan Cooper at the 26-yard line, a 48-yard punt, and a return of 16 yards. And a penalty marker is down, and Andre Waters is having problems. And it talks about, you know, the, the depth in the defensive secondary. There's another defensive back that's down with West Hopkins out. What was the deep and situation? Downfield, number 99 on the offense. Illegal use of the hand. Number 20 on the receivers. The penalty's all set. We'll replay the down. We'll kick again. So I was saying it looked like a deep situation in the defensive secondary for the Eagles is now turning out not to be that way. Just during the course of the last couple plays. Waters appears to really be hurting. Back fouls and Cooper, the only uh, extra people they have. If Andre Waters can't continue. Waters is from Cheney State in Philadelphia, better known for their basketball exploits. With Howard, who was guilty coming down the field early. There was Bud Grant. Bud Grant talking things over. Like the, the line, of, as you look at some stories about Bud Grant the other day, when, of course, Lou Holtz, the University of Minnesota coach, uh, ex now, now at Notre Dame, with that coaching position open, somebody said to Bud, you know, what about the University of Minnesota coaching job? And Bud said, I've always wanted to coach with my alma mater. <laughs> he said, but that was 20 years ago. <laughs> Kind of a stoic at times. You saw the New Orleans Saints adding to their lead, Jack Del Rio, the good-looking rookie linebacker, who rambled 22 yards with a fumble recovery. It's 26 to three early in the fourth quarter at the Superdome. Saints beat the Vikings last week in Minneapolis and are beating the Rams today. And the Saints still have the 49ers, team that they wallop. You kind of can say that, the way they dominated late in the game. You bet they did, huh? Well, Bob Phillips said when he retired that, that that win last week against the Vikings, that his last game was just the start of four in a row for him. Fourth down, and Greg Coleman will kick it away. Evan Cooper is back at the 20-yard line for the Philadelphia Eagles. Vikings lost three in a row, six of their last eight after a good early start, as Wayne mentioned, including the win over the 49ers in the opening game. Cooper lets it bounce, takes the Minnesota bounce, and Joey Browner will down it inside the 15-yard line with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. And now another flag. another flag. And it appears that Coleman may have to kick that one again. That was 44 yards. Got a 48-yarder and a 44-yarder off, and he wants to keep both of them, you know? Keep that average up there, and they keep making him kick one. I don't know if he'll make the Pro Bowl or not, but he ought to make the trip to Hawaii just because of all the work he's doing in this one game. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is Ray Cashin. Illegal motion in the middle of the line by the offense. Still fourth down. Coleman has seven punts that counted today and two that have been nullified. He must be saying enough is enough, guys, in that huddle right now. Hope he's working commission. <laughs> be a rich man if he is. Coleman will be punting from the 20. Cooper moves up now to the 25-yard line. And another good kick by Greg Coleman. A great kick. Cooper on the 15. Laying down 
of the artificial turf at the 27-yard line. That was a 49-yard kick by Greg Coleman and the tackle by Alan Rice of the Vikings. Coleman demonstrated what we've been talking about, about him all afternoon. Consistent, dependable, and having the Pro Bowl kind of year. And this is interesting. Greg Coleman has more punts today than Viking quarterbacks have completions. Eight punts to only seven completions. This is the last time you saw that. You're seeing it right now, as a matter of fact. First and ten at the 29 with 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. Play action. Jaworski Howard almost got him, and Keith Millard did get him for the sack. And that's the second of the game for the Vikings. We talked about you know, Reggie White playing a lot of games. So did so did Millard in the USFL. He said one thing about NFL quarterbacks, they get rid of the ball in a hurry. He noticed that right yeah, away, didn't he? Right. This will be history for the third quarter. It'll be second and 18 following that nine-yard loss. And there is the gun, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Eagles 23 and the Vikings nothing. We now pause for a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam. All the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. Along with Wayne Walker, this is Dick Stockton here at Veterans Stadium. It's been a whitewash for the Eagles, 23-0 as we start the fourth quarter. Second down and 18 for the Philadelphia Eagles and Ron Jaworski. A fade pattern, but caught out of bounds by Mike Quick. Covering on the play was Willie Teal. Third down and 18. Why would I ever start calling it the fade pattern? What do you think that term came from? They didn't have that one I played. Dick, I'm asking you a serious question. The fade pattern. Wayne, they didn't have a lot of things when you played. <laughs> they had leather helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they mean <laughs> when they say fade pattern, but I really don't know where that term started. Third down and 18. Jaworski. Looks like he was throwing a changeup over the middle to Herman Hunter, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and Horan will come in to punt for Philadelphia. 23 to nothing to score. The closest the Vikings got. They were trailing 10 nothing and had a first and goal at the nine. Second down at the one, and they couldn't punch it over. And then Jan Stenerud missed a 19-yard field goal. Could have been 10-7 or 10-3, and then Philadelphia added a field goal and a touchdown and have rolled away. Anthony Carter, who has a 40-yard punt return to his credit today, standing at the 35-yard line, his own 35, and Horan with a good high punt. Carter, back at the 33, tackles almost in his step by John Good. Great coverage following a great punt. The New York Giants battling Cleveland, leading now 30 to 21 in the fourth quarter. Joe Morris, a five-yard run, has two touchdowns. Look at the Saints over the Rams, and I think John Robinson's got to have a lot of concern, don't you? You bet. It. They, they're in trouble when they get behind early, and they are in trouble in this game, and they were behind early from the start. Now a good come from behind team. Both of these teams kind of are. Perhaps San Francisco a little bit better than Washington. That'll be a good one. Looking forward to it. That two-game lead to be won at the end of this day. First and 10 at the 31, Bono swings it out, incomplete to Allen Wright. Second and 10, Wade Wilson started at quarterback today. Tommy Kramer, who had a horrendous afternoon last week against New Orleans, was benched today. They called it wear and tear. He had a stretch ligament in the knee, said he couldn't run, but he took some warm-up throws. 
They went with Wade Wilson, who was 6 of 14 for only 44 yards, and now in the second half have gone exclusively with Steve Bono, who was 1 for 10 and 5 yards. Man, I'd like to see him hit a couple in a row so he can relax out there and get a little bit more into the game. Second and 10 for 31. Draw play to Alfred Anderson. They check that, Allen Wright. Rice again, bringing it out to the 35-yard line. Reggie Wilkes making the tackle. Rice was a quarterback in junior college. I guess Anderson also played some college quarterback. Rice's best effort this year was 23 yards against Detroit, but he had three touchdowns. Third down and six for the Vikings. <laughs> Bono in trouble and sacked by Thomas Struthers. Third sack of the game for Philadelphia. And it's fourth down and Greg Coleman runs out on the field as if eager to punt the ball again. The fewest points that the Vikings have scored coming into this game was the nine they got against the Chicago Bears in losing 27-9. They've gone over 20 points the last two weeks, but have a big fat zero right now, and no real prospects for breaking into the scoring column. This has been a tough team for Bud Grant to figure out to turn this into Vikings. These have to be a lot better this time here than they are. Another outstanding punt by Greg Coleman, sending Evan Cooper inside the 20, and walks out of bounds. Jay Carroll helped him. A 54-yard kick that time by Coleman. That's our story, bright for the Eagles, dismal for the Minnesota Vikings, with a lot of time remaining here in this fourth quarter. Philadelphia taking over, and Ron Jaworski remains a quarterback, Wayne, for the Eagles. Yeah, I, I just, you kind of wonder whether he'll finish the game or not. Randall Cunningham's there on the bench, a guy that they want to give some time to whenever they can, and they're approaching that area where they can get him in there with not having to worry about too much. Jaworski became the second, 22nd quarterback in history to reach 25,000 yards last week. Ernest Jackson fighting his way toward the 25-yard line is stopped by Keith Millard and David Howard. <laughs> Second and seven. Jackson has gained 79 yards has carried 20 times this afternoon. Jaworski is 36 yards away from a 300-yard passing game. And Jackson is stopped at the 25-yard line. It'll be third down. And about six, David Howard and Keith Millard again makes the tackle. Comes in the nickel defense of the Minnesota Vikings. Dick, this is an area that, of a game and, and really for Minnesota, the area of the season where you can find out a lot about people and their character. How much, you know, how much heart they got. Do they play when they're down? Do they play when it looks tough? Those kinds of situations. And if anything good comes out of a game, you find out who's willing and who's not in these situations. Third and seven at the 25. Jaworski. Herman Hunter was in stride, but he just dropped it. That was a beautifully thrown pass. Jaworski had a chance to get over that 300-yard mark with that completion for sure. It would have been about 70 yards. John was, Turner covering. It was right on the shelf for him. Fourth down, Mike Horan in the kick. Anthony Carter will go deep for the Vikings. It's been a ping-pong game of punters. 20 to nothing at the half. We've had a field goal since then. And basically, it's, it's been a kicking game. Almost blocked. And the ball out of bounds. At the 43-yard line, the Vikes will take over. Wade Wilson has returned. As quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, Steve Bono is out of the game, and Wilson, who started, 
and played the first half with those numbers now taking over and you wonder who this is fair to this is another tough thing to do is to be taken out of a game sit around on the bench get cold and then be thrust back into it in a situation like this ball at the 42 yard line first and 10 23 to nothing in favor of philadelphia wilson hits his receiver anthony carter and carter has the first down to the 36 yard line of the eagles roynell young on the tackle that's a 22 year old nifty 22 yard nifty play you bet it was a pretty good throw for the first one too out of the box Wade Wilson told us last night when we were talking to him, he said, I've accomplished everything I can in practice, and now, you know, I just really need game experience. He's getting it here now. Kirk Loudermilk has replaced Dennis Quilly at center. Loudermilk, a rookie from Ohio State, number 63. Wilson has gone deep for Mike Jones. Incomplete covering was Elbert Foul. Foul did a good job staying with Jones. He said, I'd, I like to throw the ball down too a lot, but I doubt if I'll be able to do that much today. He said, speaking about the Eagles defense, because they play that zone so well, it's very hard to, to get behind them deep. And he felt that he'd be throwing a lot to the back, and that was fine with him earlier in the game, but that's not going to get him anything now. You asked him a good question. You, you said, do you think this is an opportunity to perhaps move into the number one spot? And he had a good answer. That's right. He said, I won't put pressure on myself by thinking that this is my big chance. He said, uh, I'll look at it. This is a temporary thing, and I think I'll be better for it if I just feel that way in my mind. We saw, we saw the Denver taking the lead over Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh has come back. David Woodley to Louis Lipp. Second and 10 at the 35 with 11 minutes to go in this game. Wade Wilson. Flag down. Wilson dives. He may not have had the first down, by the way, if he was diving for it. And it looks to be a holding penalty against Minnesota. That's what the Eagles say, but that is not the call. Holding, number 71 on the offense. Illegal use of the hands, number 91 on the defense. Penalties all set, second down. Ken Clark for the Eagles was indeed holding. Mark McDonald. for the Vikings. So the Eagles were right, and then they showed uh, some uh, distress when the call didn't go their way because of the offsetting penalty. So it's still second and 10 at the 35. Here's Ken Clark, defensive MVP the last two years for the Eagles. And off Allen Wright. Rice gets by Gary Cobb and has a first down and out of bounds. Andre Waters chases him there. A 12-yard pickup for Allen Rice and a first down for the Minnesota Vikings. This is a late play, kind of, it's a draw situation. It's, it's about the same play that Herman Hunter ran for a touchdown for Philadelphia last week against Dallas. a while more than five years since the Vikings experienced the shutout first and ten at the 23 Wilson flag down Carter was defended by Roynell Young and Elbert Fowle and Carter said I didn't do anything wrong and there was a lot of contact downfield Interference, number 81 on the offense. Well, it is against Carter. Here's the end of it right here. Huh. He just stopped. <laughs> yeah. Getting a rebounding position was all. You know, the ball was there, and uh, I don't even think he saw that other man that he banged into, Roynell Young. In any event, the penalty is against Anthony Carter and the Vikings. First down and 20, and they set it back to the 34-yard line. Ball's on the way. Now, there's contact made right there before any of the players make contact. Well, that thing had to happen way before we, we saw that, but I don't know if it did. He was late throwing the flag, and that was okay. The official was right there, and it was a late call. First down and 21. 
Alfred Anderson, stopped by Evan Cooper, and they have to bring a few people apart. This is where the frustrations sometimes overflow. Green Bay beats Tampa Bay, 21-0. Pittsburgh leading Denver now, 23-17. Cleveland draws closer to the Giants. Colts are giving the uh, Patriots quite a battle. They're in the fourth quarter in Indy. 9.35 remaining. 23 to nothing in favor of the Eagles. It'll be second down and 13. Wilson. Roy L. Young makes a textbook play on Anthony Carter. You called it. Good individual cover man anyway, and you made a good one there. Minnesota put three receivers to one side of the field. Anthony Carter over to the right on Roy Nell Young, hoping they'd get man-to-man -man a single coverage, and they did. Wilson not looking anywhere else. Number 43 all alone over there with his receiver is up to the task. The hand in there knocks it down. Can't do any better than that. He was shaken up before, but Roy Nell Young came back. It's third down and 13 on the 26-yard line, 9.24 remaining. Wilson pass, caught inside the 10. Anthony Carter, I believe, wrestled down by Brenard Wilson and help from Roynell Young, a 19-yard gain, and this will be first and goal from Minnesota. They, they were there before, though, Wayne, early in the ball game. Yeah, they were. It almost looked like this pass may have been intended for Buster Ryan's number 88. It was overthrown him, but can't see who Wilson was going to. Overthrown there, but right in the hands of Anthony Carter. What do you think? So it's first and goal for the Vikings, who had a first and goal to nine early in the second quarter, trailing 10-0. There's the seven-yard line here. Anderson in motion. Wilson goes the other way to right. He's in for the touchdown. And might have pulled something as he went in and winds up limping. Allen Wright with the touchdown, his fourth touchdown of the year. The first one is a receiver, and he's shaken up. Good call. Watch how they pull some linemen out to the left on a little rollout that gets the defense leaning that way, taking a few steps that way, and particularly the linebackers and then throw back across the field to number 36, Allen Rice, who was wide open. Misdirection pass play that time. You've heard of misdirection runs. That was misdirection pass. That's the first touchdown pass this year for Wade Wilson and the seventh of his career. And the Vikings are on the board with 8.27 to go. Jan Steneru with Coleman doing the holding at the seventh point, and it's now 23-7. So the Eagles cannot get the shutout, but they still lead 23 to seven with 8.27 remaining. The Minnesota Vikings, who finally put Wade Wilson, or I shouldn't say finally, but put him back in the ball game after Steve Bono replaced Wilson in the second half, leads the Vikings to a touchdown, 23-7 the score. Tonight on CBS, fine lineup, beginning with 60 minutes. Murder, she wrote, Crazy Like a Fox and Trapper John M.D. That's tonight on CBS. Alan Wright, kind of a bittersweet moment, scores a touchdown and uh, seemed to pull a muscle going in. Oh, muscler turned an ankle. He was limping somewhat as he came to the bench. In any event, Wright with his fourth touchdown of the year and the Vikings. Denarud will kick off. Eagles are looking for an onside kick possibility. Cooper is back, but they got a lot of people up front who can handle the ball. And here it is, the onside kick. Covered by Philadelphia. The Saints, with five field goals by Morton Anderson, defeat the Los Angeles Rams. 29 to three, the final score, and the Rams have to be worrying because their lead has been cut to a game and a half, and if the 49ers can beat the Redskins coming up next on CBS, it'll be a one-game lead in the West. 
But Jay Schrader may have something to say about that, Wayne Walker. Yes, I think he will have something to say. He's been all right. Just coming in for injured Joe Theismann. They kind of rallied around him, and they've been playing good defense in Washington lately also. Eagles have the ball, first and 10 at the Viking 45. With 8.20 to go, Jaworski stays in. And Michael Hannock gets the call for about three yards. Next week, the Eagles will play host to the Washington Redskins, who have other things on their mind, of course, today against the Niners later on. And then following that game against Washington, the Eagles finish with two games on the road against the Chargers in San Diego, and they close against the Vikings in Minnesota. Certainly, it's not out of the realm for Philadelphia to win their remaining game. But the Redskins will be their next hurdle if they can hold on here. Incomplete pass intended for Kenny Jackson. It'll be third and eight. It's been an overcast, misty day here in Philadelphia. It's been an uncomfortable week for many people in the East with overcast and rain, but I guess nothing like the heavy snows that many of our viewers have experienced. Not too bad a day to play in, though, Dick. Uh, you know, it really hasn't rained that hard. It's, it's been on some here, but it hasn't rained that hard where it really affected anything, handling the ball, or the ball got slippy, or did the field. And the temperature is not all that cold here, so the players are doing pretty good out there about the weather conditions this time of year here. Six completions in a row thrown by Jaws as third down and eight at the 43. Jaworski gets by one defender and runs and may have the first down. Joey Browner. He may be just a touch short. Joey Browner was really closing on him and he had to go into that hook slide for self-protection. He's been around long enough to know that. But this is just a great job by him initially here in the pocket. This is composure right here, ladies and gentlemen. Martin goes flying by him. Millard goes flying by him. He jumps over a guy, looks downfield, and he's ready to get down there when he had to be. And they're a little bit short. You're right, fourth down. And the Eagles, with fourth and less than a yard, are going to go for it. Leading 23 to 7. That's a smart play here. the first down. Well, he's, a, he's a tough guy, Jaworski is. Of course, he suffered a fractured leg last year, but up until that time, and 116 starts, consecutive starts in a quarterback position, that's pretty unique. No one has ever questioned his toughness. No, sir. And that's true to the fans here in Philadelphia. Jaworski brought him as close as anyone has uh, since Van Brocklin brought the Eagles to that title 25 years ago when he brought them to the Super Bowl, only to lose to the Raiders four years ago. Firmly established here in the, in the community. Owns a couple of golf courses. So, what he does with his leisure time in the summer, in the spring, makes money. <laughs> First and 10 at the 35 with seven minutes to go in the game. Ernest Jackson, straight ahead. To the 32-yard line, gain of three. David Howard and Dennis Folk making the tackle. Jaworski used Jackson to the tune of 82 yards. It's been a busy day for Ernest. 22 carries, as you see. That's what he wanted to be on target with. Remember, he told us he needed between 20 and 25 carries to do his thing. Six and a half minutes to go. The Eagles have won five of their last seven games. Came in next to last in the NFL in point scores. Play action on a bootleg, and Jaworski is hit and fumbled. The Vikings have it. Willie Teal is going to go all the way for the touchdown. And the Vikings on a 65-yard fumble recovery and return by Willie Teal, set up by Keith Millard, who made the original hit on Jaworski, are now with 23 to 13. Yeah, pretty strange call right here. 57 Chris Martin back there. 75 Millard. They both had it, but it was Millard that knocked it down. 
And Willie Field bounces up to him, down the sideline, untouched. No one was close. Jaworski was the closest Eagle player when Field got the ball, and he was sitting down at about the 45-yard line. So Willie Teal with a fumble recovery for a touchdown also had an interception to end things in the first half. And it is now 23 to 13 with 6.01 to go. And Senaru will try to add the 14th point with Coleman holding. So for Philadelphia, bringing back some bad memories of that Atlanta game three weeks ago. The kick is good. And it's 23 to 14. And now... Believe it or not, the Vikings are within a touchdown and a field goal of taking the lead in this game, and that's happened before in 6 one You bet, and if you look back down to that, that chip shot field goal that Stenerud missed in the first half at the end of that 72-yard drive. An, an injured eagle. Looks like Greg Brown. I wonder what he was doing on the field because he's a defensive player, but a lot of times you put your big people in the block against those things he got on the field <laughs> want to remind you next week as we have a timeout because of injury next sunday the nfl today special studio guest john madden will proceed our nfl schedule it all begins at 12 30 eastern time on cbs and those are the games you'll see tampa bay minnesota new orleans Upset winners today over the Rams against the crumbling St. Louis Cardinals and the Washington Redskins against the Eagles in what should be an important game here at Veterans Stadium. Meanwhile, the Eagles look like they have their hands full all of a sudden with the Vikings. And uh, frankly, Wayne, you have to think about the experimenting that was done today by Minnesota in which they went with Wade Wilson and then Steve Bono, the rookie quarterback, took over in the third quarter. and. Uh, I think you're right. I think yeah. you said the right word for it, experimenting. I think that's, that's actually what it was. We, we said evaluating, experimenting, whatever you want to call it. But it would almost seem to you that there are better times to look at a young player and better situations to get him into their first NFL experience than in the second half of a game that you really feel that, that, that you're not out of. But he's gone to four Super Bowls, and that's yeah. more than I've gone to. <laughs> no question about that. <laughs> <laughs> can't argue about that man's success. The crowd, or what's left of it, has been silenced considerably by the dramatic fumble recovery and touchdown by Teal. It's 23 to 14. You know, with 6 one to go, I don't know if I try an onside kick now because I think that uh, that could prove detrimental if it doesn't work for you. Well, since they, you know, since they tried it the time before, I almost suspect that they need the ball back twice, Dick. they got to score twice. If they only need to score once, I'd say they'd have to kick it away. Roller down the field. Evan Cooper at the 14-yard line. He hit and dropped at the 24-yard line. So now we'll see if the Vikings defense can shut down the Eagles. Keep in mind, the Vikings, who are trailing 23-0 at one point, need a touchdown and a field goal to take the lead in this ballgame. As we said, stranger things have happened. Talking about those onside kicks, there's a strange stat about those things. When you onside kick and, and the other team is not expecting it, the recovery percentage is, is over 60%. When they are expecting it, it's down around 20, 18%. Well, the Viking defense has been responsible for keeping the game as close as it is. First and 10 at the 23-yard line for Jaworski. Ernest Jackson stops for maybe a yard, and now good reason to keep Jaws in the game, Wayne. Right? Yeah, you bet. They can't be looking at Cunningham now. Doug Martin and Keith Millard, the two inside men making the tackle. It's been a good, relatively good defensive effort for the Vikings today. Well, it's been spirited. They've hustled all over the field, never let up. I think the deep or the offense has let up in it. It's just the fact that we're a little bit puzzled about the maneuvering at quarterback. And they have the secret weapon in David Howard. <laughs> Second and ten at the 23 yard line. 519 showing on the clock. Here's Ernest Jackson. And Jackson is hit by Tim Newton. And it'll be third down. Ball is at the 27 yard line. It'll be third down and six for the Eagles. And this is a big down in this ballgame. 
We never thought we were saying that <laughs> in the second half. It's right about 15 minutes ago. But Grant Viking trying to come back in this one have already scored two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. Third down and six to the 27. And Dorsey likes Spagnola in these situations. He's a tight end left. And somehow he gets open, doesn't he? Dorsey looks one way, and there's Spagnola. Flag is down. Fumble. Vikings have have it. Browner. Browner has picked up the ball, and Minnesota has it. But there's a penalty marker down, and at the holding. line of scrimmage, and the Vikings... 74, penalty is declined. First it's down. a holding penalty against Leonard Mitchell, declined by the Vikings. That's Spagnola. Wayne Walker was right on the money there, but Spagnola coughed it up. David Howard made the hit, and Browner recovered. Spagnola's left your screen right here. David Howard did a good job with him. Spagnola initially wanted to get inside, and then he pivoted back out. Howard hustling again, you know, after the ball's in the air, went over there and just wrenched the ball away. And Joey Browner came up with it. So three big turn, two big turnovers here. Teal, 65-yard fumble recovery and run. And now Browner and the Vikings with 4.18 to go at first and 10 at the Eagle 36. Ted Brown and Alfred Anderson in there. And Wade Wilson is going for Carter. Incomplete. And it was Roy Nell Young covering on the play. He wanted to get the touch right away. Meanwhile, in that game at RFK Stadium, the 49ers lead the Redskins 7-0. Looking to come within one game of the NFC West. Carl Monroe returned the opening kickoff 95 yards for the San Francisco score. 23 to 14 here with 4-10 remaining and the Vikings very much in this game and it's been a, a sudden change of development. Wade Wilson has engineered it with a big help from the big pen. Second and 10. The pass. Sammy White, the veteran, couldn't hold on. Covered by Roy Nell Young and it's third down. Third and 10 at the 36. Now the Vikings, who need two scores, could they be thinking of getting in position for at least getting three here, Wayne? I think I'll be pretty careful with it. Uh, you know, we'll also be thinking about that. If I don't get the first down, I want to make sure that I don't force the ball in there where I give it up. You wonder why you don't see a lot of screens and draws. And, does he want a timeout? Yeah, he yeah. does. And he's going to get it. That'll leave the Vikings with one. They'll have one timeout left. They called one early in the second half when Steve Bono was installed. That's right. One of his first plays, he came up. Saw something on defense he didn't like and used the timeout then to talk it over on the sideline. The Vikings have one timeout left, and this is a very important play on third and ten. Right now, if they'd be stopped on this down, for example, on an incompleted pass, Stenerud would have a 53-yard attempt. I tell you, that is really stretching his leg to the limit now at, at this point. We watched him in practice before the game, and he was picking 45 yarders and getting them there, but, you know, anything much further than that, I think he really has to reach back and down for something extra. Look at the Browns. They have wrested the lead away from the Giants, 35 to 33. Gary Danielson has come in for Bernie Kozar in this game. Well, he finally got in there. Yeah. I had him in there early. Well, that's it, you know. <laughs> the longest field goal success by Stenero this year was 49 yards. He has missed a 51-yard attempt. Third and 10 at the 36. As I was going to say, you don't see a lot of screens and draws against Philadelphia because they're a pretty basic team. They don't take chances, and those kinds of plays aren't too successful against them for the most part. They need about six to eight yards, I'd say, on this play. Bobbles the they're going all the way for it. Carter is there. Touchdown, Minnesota. And the Vikings on a 36-yard touchdown pass from Wilson to Anthony Carter have drawn within three points. Roynell Young, number 43, Andre Waters, number 20, will be the two closest men to Anthony Carter. Roynell Young is just beside himself. I think he was supposed to turn the coverage over to Waters, and Waters didn't get there. 
That is a blown defense by the Philadelphia Eagles, and I was just saying that, you know, that they don't do that very often. But they blew it there. Waters didn't get over on the deep outside. As Young had rolled up and taken the short zone. Anthony Carter, sixth touchdown reception of the year. And Carter and Roynell Young have really had a duel today. Jennerud will try the conversion, and a very important one. Because right now, with a three-point deficit, the conversion would bring the Vikings to within two, meaning that a field goal could win it for them. Home and hold. Jennerud's kick is good. And with three minutes and 58 seconds to go, what looked like an eagle blowout has turned into a barn burner here at Veterans Stadium. It's 23 to 21 Philadelphia. All right, take a look at the defensive backs here. This is Roy Nail Young, number 43. Andre Waters back here. Roy Nail will take it short and then turn Carter over, and he looks like he thinks he has deep help. But Waters right here won't get over in the corner to help him. Watch it develop. With a big cushion now, young number 43. Let's try to run by him. He's expecting help deep. Number 20, Waters did not get over there to the corner, you'd think. So he would have been favoring that way more, but it had to be a blown defense by the Eagles one way or another. And it looked more than likely that the safety did not get over deep. This game was 23 to nothing in favor of Philadelphia after three quarters. Several weeks ago, three to be exact, the Eagles had a 17-0 lead over the Atlanta Falcons after three quarters and barely held on. In fact, in that game, Mick Luckhurst had a chance to win it with a field goal a few seconds away and didn't. And then Mike Quick caught a 99-yard touchdown pass from Jaworski in overtime. And that man, Marion Campbell, you can be sure right now his heart's got to be palpitating just a bit. No question, he looks up there with three minutes, 58 seconds left. A lot of things can happen, a lot of time for both teams. Again, you speculate, do we see an onside kick or not? Well, the defense has been doing a great job, Wayne. I, you know, we're just second-guessing up here. What do we know? But I would kick it the way he kicked it the last time. Minnesota's got just one timeout left, which means, you know, if they if they hold them, they're still on defense, they're still going to have to call one timeout to get the clock stopped. Maybe he'll kick it on the ground again. But deep. But it looks like an onside kick from the look of things. And they kick it on the ground to Cooper at the 14. And Cooper runs into his own man, maybe two of his own man, and is finally dropped at the 21 by David Huffman. It was 23-0, actually, with eight and a half minutes to go. Almost half of the fourth quarter gone by. Denver beat Pittsburgh 31-23 in a rousing game. Cincinnati defeats Houston 45-27 at Riverfront Stadium. And Seattle draws first blood against Kansas City. But the Vikings have scored 21 points in four and a half minutes. And the Eagles trying to hold them off. Ernest Jackson. And at this point, I think the Eagles are just trying to get first down. That Jackson tucked in behind Steve Kenny, the pulling guard that time. I'm going to keep the clock running. We have to watch now if and when Minnesota might use their last timeout to stop this clock, even when Philadelphia has the ball. It, they still have a lot of time. I don't think right now they have to unless the Eagles get a first They're not down. thinking that now, but as we get closer to the two-minute mark, they perhaps will. Doug Martin and David Howard made that last tackle. The ball's at the 31-yard line, second down and six. Jackson again, and it's going to be third down, and Doug Martin making the tackle. It'll be third and about four yards. And this game has done a dramatic turnabout. The Eagles still lead, but what was once 23-0 with eight and a half minutes to go. And just playing out the string has turned into a 23-21 ball game. And the Vikings very much in a position to win this game. It'll be third and four at the 33-yard line. Marion Campbell, last thought on his mind that championship team in which he was part of 25 years ago. This is a big play. Jaworski. Incomplete. 
It wasn't even thrown in first down territory. It was intended for Greg Garrity, and Carl Lee was defending him. But I wonder about that play. Oh, there was just nowhere to go downfield. Minnesota with a good job. They got a pretty good push in the defensive line, so they were back there on Jaworski a little bit. No one close to sacking him, but they bothered him some. That was really, might have been his worst throw of the day. The Viking defense is loaded with heroes today. Right now, Anthony Carter is back with Horan. Brought down close to the 40-yard line by Rich Cranach. A 49-yard punt, and Carter, who was shaken up a bit as he clutches his right arm with a 21-yard return. Well, does he challenge you? 160-some pounds, and he takes the ball and just challenges you. Carter is shaken up. He has caught a touchdown pass. A bomb from Wade Wilson to bring the Vikings to within two. He has returned a punt 40 yards, and now will have to go out of the ball game, replaced by Sammy White. The veteran. We have 2.17 to go, and the Vikings have one timeout remaining. And Minnesota basically 30 yards away from attempting a field goal that could win it. Penalty marker down. No play. And it'll be a five-yard penalty, a legal procedure against the Vikings. They'll mark it back to the 35. Ball start, number 76 on the offense, still first down. That's Tim Irwin, the right tackle. First and 15. Been kind of a penalty-free game compared to many we've seen. And the most penalties we've had have been in kicking situations today. Anthony Carter is checked back in the game, replacing Sammy White. Alfred Anderson on the back. Wilson to Ted Brown. Brown to the 45. Shy of a first down by about two yards, but close to midfield. He gained 12 of those 15 yards back. Wilson and Ellis make the tackle, and we've come down to the two-minute warning. And the Vikings, who are left for dead, before are very much alive. Wade Wilson, who played the first half and sat out the third quarter, came in cold and has completed five of nine for 96 yards and two touchdown passes here in the fourth quarter. We talk about how tough that was for a guy to start a game, you know, sit down for a while and come back into it. Performed extremely well under those circumstances. Look how that offense story has changed. Second and three at the 47. Two-minute warning is history. Ted Brown. First down into Eagle territory. At the 47-yard line, Michael Reichenbach makes the tackle, and the Vikings call two plays in that huddle with that two-minute warning and line up. Still have one timeout left. Wilson to Ted Brown. Checked by a defender to the 43-yard line. The stop by Reichenbach once more. Vikings have no need to be in a lot of hurry here. Nope, they're in pretty good shape right now. Second and five at the 42. Wilson throws it away and a wise move. Mike Jones was covered by Herman Edwards. And it stops the clock with 1.21 to go. The Cleveland Browns beat the Giants. Eric Schubert missed a 46-yard field goal in the final play of the game. So the Dallas Cowboys have a one-game lead over the Giants in the NFC East battle. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots have created a two-way tie in the AFC East. The Jets losing to Detroit Thanksgiving Day. They're now tied with the Patriots. Miami plays Chicago tomorrow. Third down and five. Wilson, fired, caught, dropped by Ted Brown. He has been a clutch performer so many times, but not that time, and he couldn't hold on. Oh, and it was just a great throw, too, by Wade Wilson. Brown came out of the backfield and ran a little slant out pattern. He sort of left of the screen, barely seen. He starts out, Wilson looks off a little bit, he comes right back over to it, and look where it was. 
perfectly thrown. Evan Cooper was the closest to him, but not really all that close. So it's fourth down, and the Vikings will go for it. Still with 1.17 to go. Eagle defense. Under pressure here. And here's Carter. Touchdown, Minnesota! What an amazing fourth down call. Wade Wilson with a 42-yard strike to Anthony Carter, who is all alone. He beat Brainard Wilson, and the Vikings are going wild. Except maybe for that man. <laughs> and that man. What an amazing turn of events here in the second half, in particular the fourth period of this game. Pretty good pressure now. He has to roll out of the pocket, gets a second look downfield, actually throws it on the run because he's getting pressure from Myron Darby. Falls right on the money. So Anthony Carter really closed on that ball when it was in the air. It looked perhaps like it might be overthrown, and he really came to it. And Marion Campbell saw the man downfield, and that was his reaction. Just a little hard shoe on the gum. And it's now... 27 to 23. Philadelphia will need a touchdown to win this game. And with 111 to go, they still have three timeouts. So this game is not history. But it should go in the history books the way it's turned around, like you say. Coleman will hold for Jan Stenerud with 111. Wade Wilson. 12 seconds on the 32nd clock. 12 seconds. Wade Wilson has had. An amazing fourth quarter after both he and Steve Bono struggled through three and a half periods of this game. And Anthony Carter is having an entire game of five passes for 124 yards and two touchdown passes. Not to mention the kick return. Benaroud with Coleman holding. And the kick is good. It's 28 to 23. There's one of the heroes, Anthony Carter. The Vikings have scored 28 points in 7 minutes and 16 seconds. This game was practically in the book for the Philadelphia Eagles. And we were talking about the rest of the schedule. And the Eagles bid to go 10 and 6 and get a wild card first. But now the Minnesota Vikings with 28 points the 716 lead and now have forced the Eagles to score a touchdown to win and they have 111 on the clock to do it there's their center road will kick off Hunter up the middle and down at the 36 yard line by yard line Jaworski up the middle to quick Quick is down and a gain of about seven yards on the play. Under a minute to go and the Eagles will line up. They still have three timeouts. Second down and three at the 43. They need a touchdown. Nothing left. Jaws. Intercepted. And knocked loose. And now they're saying it's an incompleted pass. Very big play in this game. I tell you, he hasn't quit one second in this game. And stick around that play with Spagnuolo where he stripped him of the ball. Third down and three at the 43. That much time remaining. Jaworski swings it out to Haddock. Makes a good catch of it. And gets the first down. And the Eagles want a timeout. John. Jaworski pass. Caught by Kenny Jackson. Inside the 30. And another timeout by Philadelphia. Leaves. Jaworski. Going deep. Garrity is there. Incomplete. Pete Norris. Norris. Yes, sir. I tell you, he came over. He came over. It looked like it was there. Garrity was open for a while. But... Steve North closed while the ball was in the air. Got there just in time to get a hand on it. The Worski thought he had some. He looked off, looking over to the left for a long while before he came back to the right. Ball was underthrown just enough to allow Nord to get back and get a hand on it. I bet Garrity said I'm in the clear for a while. He was. 
He scores. The only starting defensive back with no interceptions for the Vikings with a big play. Second and 10 at the 29 with that much time remaining. 28 to 23, Minnesota. Jaworski to Quick. Knocked away by Willie Peel. A brilliant play by Willie Peel who came out of nowhere to snatch away what appeared to be a touchdown. Well, you've got to know that Mike Quick thought he had one too as he ran down. They're in a zone, nobody on him. Jaworski put it in on a wire. This was a great throw. The steal comes over right at the last again. Thought he had the interception. Very unhappy he didn't. Because that would have put a lock on this one for the Vikings. Quick was in the end zone. And now it's third and ten. With that much time. Eleven seconds remaining. And you know, really, the Eagles have two more plays to get it over. They go to Haddock, underneath, and Haddock is hit inside the 20. And the Eagles will call their last timeout with four seconds remaining. Got to go in all the way for okay, the score. Well, you know that they're going to be watching Quick and Jackson, right? So now, you're towards you're thinking, maybe I can get something up the middle. We're running with one of the running backs out of the backfield, or Spagnola again. Four seconds to play. Jaworski, this may be it. Incomplete. Incomplete, and the Minnesota Vikings are coming out on the field. The game is over. Kenny Jackson was the re receiver. John Turner defended, and the final score, Minnesota 28, Philadelphia 23. Big surprise, and stay with us for the second half of our NFL doubleheader, the 49ers and the Redskins. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. Amazing. 